to go Jesus love let me hear you scream Jesus let me hear you scream Jesus Hey, so what's up, guys? We are praying in uh, Pastor Benji and Deaconess Mia's apartment. Tomorrow we leave at 1 o'clock. We're going to Houston, Texas. I just want to read a scripture. Um, in the Bible, it says, in Acts chapter 13, it says, Now in the church that was at Antioch, that's the home church that Paul and his brethren, that's where, that's where they fellowship. that's where they were submitted to, that's where they were planted at, were certain prophets and teachers... Barnabas, Simeon, who was also called Niger, Lucius of Syrian, Menanin, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the, work, for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went. So you see in the, um, in the Acts church, before they'd be sent out on an assignment or a mission, they'd get hands laid on them prayed for. They would even fast and pray. They would want to make sure the decision that they were making was right and that they were covered. They were anointed with oil. They were covered. They were ready to go because they were about to embark in warfare. If you think about war, World War II, World War I, all these wars, wars in the past, what would happen before they were sent out? They would have to be, be part of, they would come to the command. They would they would save out of their, mo the, their mothers, the wives, the, the children, and then they would go out and they would be sent to war. So we're about to go to warfare. We're going to a new region, Houston, Texas. It's different principalities, different powers, or different rules of darkness, different spiritual wickedness. And we're going to have to be able to undergo that warfare. We're foot soldiers, but we get, to, we get attacked. We wrestle, we wrestle with demons, pretty much. So we're going to pray. We're going to, get in, we're going to get in the spirit. We're going to let the Holy Ghost move. And then we're going to bring out the oil and we're going to pray. And they're going to they're gonna lay hands on all the people who are leaving tomorrow and anoint them with oil. And, and we're going to be sent out tomorrow on a mission. There's about 1,800 people that already um, signed up on Eventbrite. Probably going to hit 2,000. And just to be transparent, the building we got only holds 1,000. So we got we to overflow in the back. And um, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to be powerful. So let's get it. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? So we are at the airport. I'm with Pastor Joel. I'm with Deacon Kevin. He's dropping us off. He's gonna be there on um, on Sunday. Yeah, man, we got, you see the bag? It's about to get real. It's about to be fun, man. We're gonna have a good time. I got the Rockets jersey on. The region of Houston. I'm taking over for the Lord Jesus Christ. Taking back territory. We're gonna cast demons out. People are gonna get filled with the light of God, the Holy Ghost. Yeah, we out here, man. It's time. We're on our way from Orlando to Houston, Texas. In Jesus' name, let's get it. All right. Really we find spirit because we got the Holy Spirit. You got the um the confirmation code that I sent you guys? Yes. Okay, perfect. Frontier? This is what you said. Oh shit, we find frontier, bro. Where's frontier at? We at frontier, man. No spirit. But the Holy Spirit's still with us. <laughs> we upgraded from spirit to frontier. That's the Holy Spirit. Here. Now we're in the front. Frontline soldiers. Hey. <laughs> now, if you know about airlines, frontier is a little bit, a little, a little tiny bit better, but it's, it's the same stuff. So, yeah, we out here, man. We at the airport with it. So, so what's your name, man? Saeed. Where are you from? Pakistan? I have a friend in Lahore. Oh, you have a friend in Lahore? Lahore, yeah. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you, have you been, been to Lahore? I am living in Lahore. You for real? I am from Lahore. Wow. What are the chances, man? Let me ask you a question. Do you know about the children that get, uh, they get kidnapped and they get put in the coal mine? Yeah. And they, they, get, they, get, they get molested and abused? I saw it. Sex slaves. Yeah, I know. It's real. There's a lot of people. So my friends in, in Lahore, they rescue the children. They, they go with the, the government, the FBI, and they rescue the children out and they bring them in. Oh, yeah. This kind of things happen everywhere in Asia. But it's a lot in Pakistan. A lot in Pakistan, India too. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. In India, child, child, child rape in India is very high. Child kidnapping, raping. And Do you have any family members that, that have been kidnapped or raped? No. Wow. Are you Muslim? Yeah. I'm Christian. What if I told you that Jesus is the only way? I go to Christian school. A whole Christian school, you know? You went to Christian school? Yeah. Then, bro. I you... used to go in church. I have many Christian friends. Catholic or Christian? Catholic. Catholic? I don't know. They are Christian. 
Hey, so you get Muslim? Can I pray for you right now? Yeah. What's your name? Saeed. Yeah. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you bless Saeed. I pray that he comes to Christ and not Islam. I pray that you show him the truth, Lord, and have angels surrounding him in Jesus' name. Amen. Bro, don't, hey, don't believe in Islam, bro. Yeah, I know. Okay. Uh, just stay aside here. Okay? It's Jesus. He's the only way, right? Yeah. He's not a prophet. He's God. Who? Jesus is not a prophet. He's God. He's, he's a, a prophet. No, he's not. He's God. He's God. Remember that. He's God. He's God. For you right there. I have an audience for you right there. While I make you wait a couple of minutes for me. All right? Okay. But yeah, look at I'm with my brother Saeed, man. Today he got the truth, the truth, the gospel. Bro, look, he, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, for real, man. He loves you. Oh, yeah. You know who I am? No. You seen my video? Sometimes. Now I'm gonna see. For him? No, no. Even the people that check this in, they got the gospel. They got, they, they got Jesus. Jesus. He's not a prophet. He is God. He's the fullness of God bodily. People need to know that. I don't care where I go. They could be here in the frontier check in to this young man right here with, the, with that looks tall place, Pastor. Jesus Christ is the only way. I don't care. I'm a preacher to the day I die. Right, Pastor? You already know it. In the airplanes, in the air, in the, in the ground, wherever we go, Jesus Christ is going to be preached. And look at his shoes. He's a pastor. <laughs> He's a pastor and he's fly. It don't matter, man. I just love God. We can have fun. Look, don't be religious. You can have fun as a Christian. The Lord just wants you to preach his gospel, the repentance, the remission of sins, and stand up. Defend the gospel for real, for real. You don't got to be all everywhere you go, man. That's why the street preaching, I'm cool with, I'm cool with open air, you know, microphone preaching. That's cool, whatever. But man, I'm trying to win souls. A wise man wins souls. When I, when the Lord imparted more wisdom in my life, I started actually going one-on-one, -on -one, talking to people. The most effective, man. And then we started getting it on video, even more effective. It's like all these people are getting one-on-one -on -one at the same time through somebody else's one-on-one. -on -one. That's only the wisdom of God, bro. Yeshua. Hey, don't be religious now. Don't be yelling at people, telling them they're going to hell. Don't do that. They ain't gonna listen to you. How many souls you saved? Ask the Lord to help you give, give you some wisdom. I promise you, I promise you, the Lord will show you what I'm saying. I'm saying this with love. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not trying to mock you, I'm just being for real. Win souls, bruh, win souls. It's not about you, it's not about your opinion. It's about the Lord, it's about, it's about Jesus and his love. If they, don't know, if they don't know Jesus, how are you gonna preach hell to them? They don't care, they don't, it doesn't bother them. When you give them the good news. Jesus didn't say, preach hell and brimstone to them. He said, give them the good news, which is that they could be forgiven, his love. That's, 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 that's for God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We need to preach his love, let him know, yes, hell is real. When you see me preach, I preach hell, but I don't I don't come initially like you're going to hell. Duh, they're going to hell if they don't repent, but why would you preach hell? I preach heaven to them. Pre yeah, tell them hell is real. Yes, I believe hell is real. I preach repentance all the time, but I'm preaching a lot more repentance to those who are already saved, who are in Christ. I preach the repentance, the remission of sins. Turn your mind away from the world and come to Christ, of course, for new believers. But then in Christ, I'm saying, hey, look, hey, repent more, change your mind more get in your word read your more read your word more the bible says that the word renews the mind so it's changing your mind that's important it doesn't just it's not just one change it's consistent transformation so guys yes tell people to repent but why would you go tell somebody to repent if they don't even know what repent means why would i go say repent now or you're going to hell bro they don't know what that means bro half half of the people in this world think repentance means confession you know how many people i preach to christians and say there's a difference between confession and repentance and they have no idea and it blows their mind that's why we need to teach the right things i tell them the good news that if they change their mind to jesus if they if they turn away from their from, from their from their other theology and they come to christ they'll wash them with their blood remission forgiveness and they'll be saved and go to heaven the good news of jesus christ god bless you that's it the power of god the gospel Do you know what that stands for? Uh, I, I had, Rafa, I had, Rafa. I had, I had, a, I had a. What does it stand for? Rafa. I, uh, I can't tell you, but you. Because, because, yeah. Jehovah Rafa. Yo. It's a, it's a, it's a redemptive name of Yahweh. Yes. It means healing. Yes. Uh, I had, I used to work at Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts, the security in, office. In New York City? Yeah. Yeah. I come from New York. I just, I just, just got here uh, in October. I'm a New Yorker. But hey. I, I used to have in Lincoln Center. I used to have a constant. Uh, Patron, and go to all the metropolitan conference and everything. He was Jewish. He didn't mention that to me, but I forgot. Me, wow. right. So come on, let's take you guys downstairs, let's do it. okay? Let's do it. God bless. Okay, well, That's that. uh, the minute go off. Okay, man, but uh, I used to live 135th downtown by City College between Broadway and Amsterdam. Harlem. Yep. Yes, sir. I used to be down there a lot. I used to be down there. Yeah, a little shopping area. Uh huh. So Harlem. Okay. Right. I, I miss I miss Harlem. I used, I used to work at the YMCA. Oh, wow. In Harlem. Okay, okay. So you come a long way, man. Yeah, man. Beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, but the best thing is to give thanks to God to where we're yes. at. Allah, 
No, I'm Jesus. 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 Yeah. Jesus. It is what it is. Jesus. Amen. I hear you. I hear you. Random question, Raphael. Yeah, do, you, do you need healing in your back? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not you, my yeah. back. Uh, I have a little torn meniscus. And, uh, yeah. A little torn A little. Uh, yeah. Here, up there, the Lord told me really quickly that you need healing. Well, I do. I do. So I what do. we're gonna do is after you do this, I'm gonna pray for you. I appreciate that. And you're gonna fully get healed. And you're gonna know the power of God is real. I appreciate that. that uh, I got. Well. Comes with year, years of wear and tear. No, 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 no. no it comes with years you're of wear gonna, and tear. You're gonna get healed. And I, the, Lord, and, the, Lord and the, ankle. the Lord wants you to be healed. Well, I, 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 I'd I, like that, sir. Thanks, sir. I appreciate that. No problem. First thing I do every morning when I get up is give thanks. Hallelujah. For the blessing, brother. Hallelujah. For the blessing of just starting over a new day. Right now, we're here with Raphael. And he said he got, he has, hold on, wait for this. Once again, if you're looking for bags from right Chicago, Chicago. Chicago. So, What's the pain level one through ten for your knees when you bend down? Like right now, if you bend down, what's the pain level one through ten? Pain level uh, for my knee is seven. A seven. seven. If you, you can't bend. How low can no, you bend? I, no, I can, I can bend. I can bend. It's and just you feel the wear seven. and tear. No, I, no. I, I, on this one. Yeah. You feel the seven yeah, on that one? on that one. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, the ankle is bothered. Okay. Right. So, so, you, so you're willing? After I pray for you, you're gonna try it out. Of course. I, I want you to do one thing. Be honest. If you get healed. So, Lane is looking for Aaron you get healed. If he doesn't get healed, be honest and say I didn't get healed. And that's okay. I will not be offended. Thank you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command right now the name of Jesus Christ. Meet in the ankle right now to submit to the Spirit of God. I command right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Andre Reyes. And the ankle to submit to the Spirit of God. Please report on the increase of oversized area next to Carousel 12 to claim your property. All right. Try it. Try it out. What's that? What's, no, what's the pain level now, 1 through 10? The pain, the pain level will be honest with you. The knee is non-existent. So you have no pain in your no, knee right now? pain in the knee right now. Is, is that weird to you? Yeah, no, it's not weird. It's not weird. Have it you is, ever seen that happen before? No, I haven't. So, you, so you're telling me the pain in your knee? The, the, pain, the pain in the knee subsided, Abigail right? Just right now, after your prayer. It went away. Yes. Okay, what about the ankle? The ankle, the ankle, feels, the ankle, the ankle feels like a round one or two. A one or two? One or two. I'll pray one more time. Okay, but, uh, this is so Once crazy. Again, so, but they're like Are they always doing this? Singleton yeah. family, Abigail, Aaron. Aaron, 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 Everything come back to normal. He's healed, and I, I curse right now every lie of the devil. I uproot it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. He's healed. The Lord, the Bible says, by His stripes we are healed. The Bible says He took all our sickness and infirmity and sin on the cross. He bore it. So I commend by the Word of God Ladies right now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you right healing in Jesus' Atlanta, name. Atlanta, Everything go in Jesus' name. Try it out now. Your bags are on carousel number fourteen. Once again, if you're looking for bags from Atlanta, feel, feel Atlanta, Southwest Airlines, like 1934, the pain, the pain I would say is it's a one. one. Yes, a one. Right. Where? In the ankle. Yeah, in the ankle. In the ankle. The knee is not not. The knee is not exist. Go like this. The knee is not exist. Yeah. I, I, I Yeah. I can. One through ten. What's the pain? Nothing. Now. Nothing now. Right now. There. When I twist it. It's about a two. But when but you did, when you were like no, this? No, when I did like that, it's nothing. There's nothing. Right. Yes. But before, it used to have something. Of course, I, I have it every single day. How about, would yeah, you be willing to take off the braces right now? Yeah. Let's take them off. Okay. You don't need them, bro. All right. He doesn't need them. And then when he takes it off, that's an act of faith. That's trusting in Jesus. That He he prays to Jesus every day. Southwest Airlines is looking for the Singleton. Aaron. Aaron and Abigail Singleton. Please report immediately right to the oversight. Right. Aaron Singleton. No Immediately to the oversight area next to Carol. Okay. Because this shows an act of faith. If by him doing this, he's saying, I trust in the Lord. Not in me. I'm not God. I'm just a vessel. So he's trusting in Jesus who's using me to pray for him. Amen. Amen. And right now, by him doing this, this watch this, watch this. I won't have to even touch it. There's an, there's, you know there's an angel behind healing angel. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I command it all to be made whole right now. He doesn't need the brace anymore. I rebuke all doubt. I rebuke all lies and fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Full healing. Full. Full manifested healing by the Lord right now in his knee and ankle in Jesus' name. Ciara. Go ahead, try it out now. Hey, uh, yes, I feel, I feel the difference. What do you feel? You'll be honest, pain one through no, ten. I don't feel, feel just, just like slight, a slight pinch, but not as painful. 
and I can actually push off of it more than when, than when I could. Before you couldn't do that? Yeah, no, before I couldn't do it. But the knee, I don't feel anything in the knee. I, wow. So I'm, so I'm very the, grateful, Richard. And I'm your name is Rafael. Rafael. Not only are you healed, but you have, I'm going to pray for your hands so that you have the anointing. Amen, brother. Father God, Thank I pray you. that he, these hands will heal people Amen, too brother. when he prays for them. I pray, Lord, that you will bring them into deeper relationship with you, Lord. Thank you for Rafael and his humble heart. Thank you for his love. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is a random question. Do you have a daughter? I do have a daughter. One daughter. And, the, and your daughter that you have, she's older, she's like in her 20s? Or? She's in her 20s, she's about to turn 23. She's about to turn 23. Yes, and the Lord showed me your daughter has a very prophetic calling. She's very humble and sweet. Very sweet. Is she married? No, she's not. But she's dating a guy. She's dating? She's dating, oh. she's uh, okay. a long-term relationship, but she's off right now. Okay, so the Lord showed me something about your daughter. Yep. You are, her, your daughter was highlighted in the spirit that the Lord is going to actually... Thank you. Is she Christian already yet? No, she, she hasn't. She, yeah, she was Christian when she was Christian. She was. She's a worshiper. She's prophetic. She's sweet. She's kind. The Lord wants to use her in, in the kingdom of God. What's her name? Jaylene. Give me a hand. Father, I pray in faith right now for Jaylene. Lord, I pray that she does get married to a man of God. I pray that any struggle she has in relationship be broken. Have angels surrounding her, Lord. Is she in New York City? It's in New York City. In New York City, Lord. Protect her out there in New York, Father God. And there's any depression right now, we just command it to go. Any, any, any type of anxiety, go, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a humble heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen, my brother. Rafael. Te bendiga, Rafael. Bendiciones. Bendiciones y gracias. Yes. Bendiciones. Wow. Ahora, vamos a llevar a ustedes allá arriba para que sigan su camino y que lleguen, vayan con Dios, que lleguen salvo y salvo a su destino. ¿Ok? Gracias. Que gracias a ustedes. All right. Vamos. Yeah, you guys seen it. We haven't even made it to Houston yet. How you feeling, Pastor? Oh, oh, hey. oh, look at the He got all of my stuff on him, man. It's okay. Serve it right here, man. We didn't even make it to Houston yet, and God's already moving. Yeah, his whole life just changed. He said he couldn't push off the ankle before. He's pushing it off. He, put the, he said he literally told me over there, I'm going to throw away the braces. I don't need them. My God. So, man, God is good. Prophecy, healing, the power of God. Evangelism. Yeah. We going in the no. tunnel, the tunnel no. to heaven, the narrow road. This, this, this is a, a, a revelation of the narrow road and fast track. This is what we do. We fast track in the ministry, baby. Can't miss it. We can't miss it before the doors close. Oh my God. Hey, Joel, you good? I already know it. Come oh. on. I bet you won't preach the gospel to everybody. I bet you I Watch Pastor Joel. I bet you I will. Come on. I'm going to let him live by the Spirit. Let, let the door shut. Hey, 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 English and Spanish. All right. Let's do it. Hey, excuse me, everybody. I just want to let you know that Jesus Christ loves you so much. He came down as a human being, right? God in the flesh he came and walked this earth perfect and sinless to receive the sin of the world so he can set us free from bondage from an eternal damnation but he, i'm here to tell you that there's heaven and a father that loves you and he wants to give you freedom in all areas of your life whether it's financially healing prosper he says and the word of god says that you got plans to prosper you so he has plans for you and he'll reveal it to you in your walk when you get closer to him all you got to do is just seek him seek him in the word seek him in, in, in prayer He's your father, he's alive. He's not an energy, he's not a force, he's not the wind, he's not a piece of lightning. He's an actual person that has feelings and emotions. It says in the Bible to not grieve him. So that means he can be grieved. And he loves every single one of you guys so, so much that he died on the cross. But let me tell you something, he was buried and rose on the third day. Let me tell you guys, and his blood washes all sins away. And he wants us to repent. Or repent means change of the mind from the worldly things. And the moment we repent and believe, all everything the gospel, we receive eternal life. God bless you guys. Have a great, wonderful day, okay? God bless you too. God bless you, man. For sure, for sure. God bless you. December 6, 2006. Amen. My birthday. Amen. <laughs> I still do it. I literally felt the spirit just like. That was the first. That was yeah. powerful. Bro. I saw that. You articulated your words. Everything. Yeah, that was the spirit. I literally felt him just like. Okay, let's go, Holy Ghost, take over. <laughs> I love when he does that. The oldness, the Lord, man. Do not eat Starbucks because of the mermaid spirit. And I'm just kidding. Please do not edit this out. I'm just kidding. Land. Hey man, we in Texas, man. What are the chances? I was sitting next to two apostles, two, a man and a woman that got a, a kingdom couple. We just chopping it up. We know, we know similar people, similar, you know, this and that. Man, God is good. We in Houston now. We about to go get the, the rental. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> but we got to get our bags, so we out of here, man. Your bloodline's tainted. And your bloodline, like that's why the Bible says don't mix with a pagan. Israelites are not supposed to mix. There's a reason for all that. 
yes, can God, God washes the bloodline clean when you get saved. My, my, me, and my wife, me and my wife are saved, me and my wife are saved, but just think about the obstacles they can have when they get older. I studied like uh, pastors, like men and men, men of God and women of God. I studied them like to see like like why their kids become prodigals or why they become like worldly. It's because of the family, it's because of the aunts, the uncles, the grandma, the grandpa. But if the whole bloodline's saved, bro, it's just that today they're raised in the faith. You see what I'm saying? Before I used to be like stay away from me completely. And the Lord showed me if you do that, the devil's gonna use that. And then when they get older, they're gonna be resentful. Like, why'd you keep me away from my grandma? Why'd you keep me away from my grandpa? And then they're not gonna want to be Christians. But if, but if they grandma and grandpa, all they got is a whole bunch of testimonies about 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 revival and them, them getting saved and everything, then what happens? Then the kids, all they do, all they want to do is get saved. They don't want to want Jesus. Yeah, bro. Cleanse the bloodline, bro. That's why we have to pray. Hey, y'all see that? Whoa. Hold on, I've got focus. It's called Asian witchcraft at the, at the Houston airport. We don't really know what that is. Go look it up. Go look it up. It's Asian witchcraft. Man. Yeah, we out here, man. Waiting on the car, waiting on the bus, the shuttle to get to the, to the mystery car. Divine connections everywhere. We met a man, special forces in the Air Force, who goes to a different country saving children, saving, saving people from terrorism. I was, on the, I was on the flight next to two apostles in Ocala. The Lord is good, man. We just saw an apostle that's actually at the conference pull up. So, man, God is good, man. Yeah. Whatever he's going to do, he's going to do. He's going to do it. Whatever he want to do, he's going to do it. Amen. I'm very excited, man. Do the works of an evangelist. You don't have to be an evangelist. Yay! I'm telling you, that's modern day Paul. Excited for the word that he's gonna drop in Texas. If the Holy Ghost is gonna drop, boom, and break chains of religion. Watch. And I'm assuming you agree? Yes. <laughs> it's like chains falling off. And also the people that, that, that need to receive the power, the, the, the dunamis power unto salvation. Souls will be saved. Souls will be saved. Amen. Uh, there's a wise man wins souls, and this man is wise. He asks for supernatural wisdom Every all the day. time. Break with me! <laughs> You hit the brake pedal, the doors will close. Um, tap over here, the doors will open. And you can also do it. Uh, I just got delivered. I just got delivered from the spirit of religion. We out here, man. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that spirit just left my back. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the traction? It's like. It's like I already said it, now the Lord done said it, so it's done, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hey, they can hate all they want, but any promotions, good promotions. Hey, what's up guys? So we are at the Norris Conference Center. We are going to the conference day one. We're expecting to make divine connections. Um, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I don't know about Pastor Joel. How do you feel, Pastor Joel? I'm excited to, for what God is going to do here. Pastor Joel, you ready? Hey, what's up, y'all? It's day two, and we out here. What did you think about last night? Last night was cool, man. We went out there. Um, we, uh, there, it was it was powerful. That there's a prophet that, that he preached a powerful message on um, faith, doubt, unbelief, and trust, which really touched me. It makes me. Um, I was actually doing a teaching this morning. I was preparing a teaching myself to elaborate more on that using scripture, which is beautiful. Um, yeah, man, we're on our way to uh, to Galleria Mall. We're gonna evangelize. 
I'm here with Pastor Joel. Amen. To the right of me, you know. We're gonna go over there and we're gonna we're gonna pray, man. We're gonna see what happens. There's almost two thousand people that have already signed up for the revival, man. So Sunday's gonna be lit. Are we gonna get some evangelism, man? We might we might we might expose some witchcraft too. Who knows? What's up, y'all? We are at Snooze Eatery. I used to go to this spot when I was in uh, living in Cali back in the day. My wife's probably gonna be a little jealous because she loves eating here. But I believe there's gonna be an encounter with the, the waitress, whoever seats us. I believe it's gonna be a woman. They're gonna seat us, and I believe that they're gonna get encountered by the Lord. So I'm excited, man. Let's see what God does. Hey, we are at Galleria Mall officially. Powerful encounter at Snooze. I believe that we're gonna do it and do the same thing in the mall. We're gonna hit we're gonna hit up some stores. We just we just gonna we just gonna vibe, you know, in the spirit. Yes, and don't get religious because I said the word vibe, okay? Please, please. Yes, we're gonna hang out. Alright, we're gonna hang even the word hang out like, like I'm, I'm hanging off something, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like right, it's wordplay. Anyways, we're gonna go have a great time and we're gonna go inside and, and we're gonna um let the Lord move. Holy Ghost is going to move and souls are going to be saved, touched, delivered, healed. This is a lifestyle. This is not something we just do for the camera. But God has given us the grace to be able to record these things. But off camera, we are doing this on the regular because we love Jesus and we want to spread his love. Let's get it. He's about you. <laughs> Dance, huh? Then they have like a dance where they're like, they're like a whole thing or something like that. Yeah, you gotta get out the car and then you gotta be like. Yeah, the Westin's a rich, rich hotel. You go to any, ma any, any major city, you'll see a Westin, just like a W. Some people, like famous people, they'll be like, I only stay at the Westin. I will never stay at a Marriott. I'm dead serious. The, the Marriott's too low class. Look, I'll stay wherever, man. Back in the day, I used to have a connect in the world with somebody who worked at the, uh, the, at the Ritz. So I used to get the Ritz Carlton for cheap. And I stayed at those bougie hotels and I'm not gonna front. It is an experience. And they give you like these robes and they, like it's OD, bro. They That's give you like a whole, like it's like a whole experience. They make you feel it. Oh, you feel like you, like you, like you feel like a prince. <laughs> you go to the Western right now, you get one day a night, it's probably like a band. Oh my. Thousand dollars a night. What's up, y'all? I'm with again. And Daryl. Daryl? Kiana. Kiana. And y'all were on the same flight as us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. So we all the, we all the way over here at the Galleria in Houston um, at Neiman Marcus, and we seen them. So I know it's not coincidence. Um, my my first question will be for y'all. What is the purpose of life? The purpose of life. Like, what are we doing here? Like, what's the purpose of life? Like, what is every like everybody doing here? That guy over there. Everybody, like, what are we doing here? Yourself, you have to determine your purpose. Like, and then I'm That's very obvious. spiritual. So, so like, you're spiritual. Yeah. So, so what do you believe in? Jesus, of course, God, the Creator. You know. So you believe Jesus is God. Well, right? that's His Son. Jesus. Two so Jesus is not God? Well, they're all one person, but again, you know, God created Jesus through Mary, and of course, you know. So Jesus but, is God? Like, he's like they're, they're all one, but separate? Well, we're all God. I mean, we, we were created by him. Okay. So, I feel like we're all one. Cause you're, it's you, up to you to determine your purpose. Because you were wearing that dope Jesus is King um, jacket yesterday. That's Kanye's brand, right? Uh, no, that's a, that's a TikToker I got from Who's a TikToker? Uh, forgiven by grace. Okay, that's what's up. And what what do you believe in? My own God, but like God. You know what I mean? I believe like I don't know, like I'm just seeking. Yeah. Kind of like just waiting so God like or whoever it is yeah. reveals it. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, um. And where do you think we go when we like? Do you, do you think we're spirits and bodies? Like we're spiritual beings. You believe in spiritual? Do you, are you spiritual? Yeah, a little bit. Like like so. What do you think we are? Like spirits and bodies? Yeah, I do. So where do you think after our body dies? Because it's going to die, right? Well, your body is your body is your body, but your spirit leaves your body. So exactly. That's something totally different. So, so then, like, once you go, like, because I work in healthcare, so like, I. What? Um, so you see, do you see people die? Yeah, I'm a respiratory therapist, so. Like, what? I see people die all the time, but um, I see the body like that. That person is no longer there, like, especially with brain death patients and everything. That's not that person anymore. They're gone. That's but deep. I mean, so their spirit's gone. I mean, you can still celebrate their life, you know, after they die. But um, I just believe. But, they, but they're going somewhere. Yeah. So you believe in heaven and hell? For real? Like, so what do you think hell is? Well, I can't really say. You don't know? I don't know. Uh, okay. That's what's up. What, do you believe in heaven and hell? Yes. Yeah. For real? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't really, I don't try to get into like all of that. You know, I just like you, you, you believe in the potential of it, but you're yeah. not, but you're not like a hundred percent. Like yeah, I believe like, in this. It's very unaware. Like nobody truly knows anything. You know what I mean? So she works in the, you work in the health, healthcare field. Where do you work? Uh, I'm in college right now, but I'm going to be a surgical technician. Oh, that's what, 
Are you guys, are you guys relatives, like family? Yeah, it's my brother, it's my sister. What? That's that's what's up. So you guys got like a like a good like a family of a medical people. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. For the most part. Okay, that's what's up. So like, like um, have you guys ever heard about a near death experience when people die and they come back in their body? You ever you ever seen that? In the hospital? Yeah. Where they die like legally dead, like heart stopped beating for like 20, See, 30 I minutes. To what's called cold blue. So I'm literally trying and to resuscitate you and bring people back to and life. They, and when they come back, what do they say? I mean, well, we kind of put a tube down their throat, so for the most part. So they, and their heart will be done, like like they flatlined. No pulse. It's called pulse. Like they have no pulse at all. Oh, blue. Them, we bring them back. Well, try to at least. And the, the what's part. the longest you've seen someone dead and then come back? I mean, you can do CPR up to long. It all depends on the doctors. Like we call them rounds. Like we do rounds of CPR. Um, well, what about like, you? What have you seen the longest? The longest I feel like I've been in the room for about 45 minutes trying to get to my And they're dead? Yeah, but even after that point, just because, of course, we talk to the family and, you know, they determine what the patient will have wanted if they want to put Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Gives me the chills. <laughs> so, it's been, I've seen about 45 minutes. What if I said, what if I told you guys I studied, I studied near death experiences, like in detail? Right. I was, I was low-key um, obsessed with them at one point. Mm -hmm. Because I, I couldn't understand how like all these people would actually go to heaven or hell. Yeah. All of them. They'd always go to heaven. And, I, and it bothered me because I'd be like, okay, maybe Muslims see Allah. Maybe Muslims see Muhammad. Maybe, maybe Buddhists see Buddha. Because I'm going to be real with you. I, I'm, I'm deep, I, was, I was really deep into Haitian voodoo. I used to go to Haiti. I used to go to New Orleans. I used to be uh, with Solange Nose. Like, you know Solange Nose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, the warlock that was training me up to be a dual inducted warlock was actually the one that would do her rituals for her and her family. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I actually met her and all that. So, I was deep into that. I was a drug dealer, moving about hundreds of pounds of weed mm -hmm. all the time. Like, monthly, I lived in California, had properties and cars. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty, pretty deep into, like, trying to figure out the purpose of life. Right. I lived in Greece. I've been to Barcelona, Amsterdam. I mean, Portugal, London. I mean, all over the world. Right. But I was empty. Because I had all these women, I was having sex with women all the time. Like I'm talking about five, six girls a it week. Like meaningless, right? Yeah, it was like temporary feelings of like it feels good, it feels good. But then I'm like, what's the purpose of life? That's what tormented me. Because I had all the sex, I had all the money, I had all the car, like, which is good. Like there's nothing wrong with like having things, but like, I wasn't fulfilled. And that's what got me into New Age. So I started having a lot of, like I had thousands of dollars with the crystals, altars. I was doing rituals. I got deep into shamanism, psychics, mediums. I mean, I was deep, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I, I kept asking the higher power, whoever they were or whoever he was or she was, whatever. I kept asking the higher power, who are you? Like, show me who you are. Yeah. And I had a supernatural encounter with the higher power. Mm -hmm. I was raised Catholic, never thought it was Jesus. I studied Islam, Buddhism, all that, like deep, like deep, bro. And then I had a supernatural encounter with um, the higher power. Demons came out of me. I fell to the ground. I was blacked out for a little bit and demons were coming out of me. I was spitting up blood. I was spitting up vomit. And I was alone in my apartment. And the, and the higher power is Jesus Christ. And he delivered me. And look at me. And, and people, people judge me all the time because I, I got tattoos on my, on my, and, I was, on my, and I'm an ex-warlock. But I'm actually a pastor now. I pastor, um, and we see demons cast out of people. People heal from diseases all the time. And I just want to let you all know he could do the same thing for y'all. I don't judge nobody. I let the Lord do it. But I tell you the truth, there is a, there, we are going to go somewhere when we die. And it is going to be heaven or hell. Heaven is like a real dimension. That's a real place. Study near-death experiences and y'all will see like deeper. Like it's real. And if God could free me from everything he freed me from, he could free all of us. You know what I'm saying? So could I, that's not coincidence. Everything's spiritual. But, um, and I saw y'all on the plane. Yeah. I just want to pray for y'all. Can I pray for y'all? Yeah, and can I ask you a random question? Mm -hmm. Do you deal with anger? Me? No, not really. You're her, you're her, you're her brother. Does she, does she deal with anger? No. Not really. She's, really? she's not very angry. She's very passive, actually. Very passive? Yeah. Do you have unforgiveness towards somebody? Yes, yeah, she does. And you're angry at him? <laughs> That's a past I, relationship. No, not a past relationship. What is it? A family member? Yeah. Who? <laughs> Tag eggs. Both do like that. Because I've seen anger and I've seen unforgiveness. I just don't know who. And I saw, and I saw a male. Yeah. Well, I have very... I kind of stay away from male figures, so... Why is that? I mean, I went through. I don't. Your mind. biological father? No, no. Who was it? Somebody in your life that hurt you as a male? Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. That's that's spiritual. Look, I'm gonna tell you something. I was a warlock. I know this spiritual stuff. 
It's spiritual to keep us away from our destiny and our calling. You can't do that. You can't be. You know how people be like, oh, I got hurt from a, I got hurt from somebody, so I'm never gonna get hurt again. Yeah. That's 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 actually like coming in agreement with demons. There are demons, bro. When you see my social media, y'all gonna see it. I cast demons out regularly. I see people deal dealing with. They fly from all over the world to come to our church. Dealing with diseases, get healed like this from a deliverance, and and it comes from unforgiveness. It comes from unforgiveness. It comes from pain, from trauma. I'm dead serious. If God, you feel me? It's spiritual. Even doctors can't get to the root of diseases. They just suppress it. We're just gonna give you stuff to suppress it, but they don't even know. There's stuff that medical medical science can't figure it out. It's just there to just to cope with it. You know this. You're in medical, so. Okay. I want to pray for you guys and then the, the, the Lord would just move Jesus you believe in Jesus too the potential of him yeah but you're not sure it's called agnostic that's how I was my whole life bro, I used to laugh at Christians bro they don't want to drink they don't want to they don't want to have sex till marriage I'd be like bro you tripping <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> until I had an encounter and now I have a wife and three kids right. and I never was faithful to one woman my entire life yeah. I was I was a whore I was a player mm -hmm. so you don't want that your whole life right Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, what's your, what's your name again? Daryl. Daryl and Kiana. Father, I pray for Daryl and Kiana in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them, Lord. You died on the cross for our sins. You were buried and rose on the third day so that we could be forgiven. Simple. I pray that you reveal deeper things about the gospel to them, that they will repent, which means turn away from anything that they might, any, any false theologies in their mind like you did with me, Lord. If you could deliver me and you could save me, you could do it for them. Bless them, protect them, Lord, and keep have angels surrounding them. Bless their entire family. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brother. You were with the Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, what just what just happened just now? Uh, Pastor Rich, Pastor Rich just started uh, telling her about the uh, the evil eyes and, and telling her about Jesus and the gospel, the quick and simple gospel, and um, he noticed the evil eye. Um, and he asked me to tra uh, translate in Spanish, and I explained to her like an ignorance. She didn't she didn't use it for anything, but just for style. But we told her that in ignorance, in ignorance we do things that that attract demons and depression, anxieties, and and all these other things. So I explained that to her, and she was like, "Oh wow, she she didn't even know that this was from the devil." So, en el nombre de Jesús, otro ídolo destruido, al piso. <laughs> Pisamos así, igual como Jesús pisa a la serpiente, en el nombre de Jesús. En el nombre de Jesús. Jesús gana otra vez y el demonio pierde otra vez. Pa, 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 pa. Raca, ta, ta, rabuzú. Hey, Pastor Joel, so what you about to do? I'm going to preach the gospel out loud. Where? No, not, not hellfire. But the king and life. Where, where are you doing it at? Huh? Where are we at? Gal G Galleria Mall in Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, baby. Jesus Christ is going worldwide again, just like this. Hey, excuse me, everybody. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you a lot. He loves you so much that he came down as a human. God in the flesh, he came down and he loves you so much that he was crucified. He was buried and rose on the third day and he wants to give you life. He wants to give you life. He wants to set you free from depression, from anxiety, from anything that's holding you down, any, any weight in your body, anything. He wants to set you free. 
He wants to set you free, my brother. He loves you so much and he wants to, he got plans for you. He got plans for you. But you need to, the moment that you believe, the moment that you believe and you turn from the world, which is the worldly ways, the, the smoking, the, the fornication, the, all of that, right? The worldly things. He fills you, he fills you with his spirit and he, and he gives you life. And he gives you life and he makes your vision clearer for life. All you gotta do is just believe. Repentance, repentance is a change of the mind. And when you repent, when you repent in the mind, you turn to holiness. You repent from all the worldly things. Change your mind about it. Go to the holiness, which is what? Living, waiting, waiting for a husband, waiting for a wife, moving in morals. He loves that. And he wants to set you free from everything. He loves you a lot. He wants to give you a husband. He wants to give you a future. He loves you so much, but you need to turn away. He need to turn away from the world. Don't be rejected. You're, nobody's rejected in this world. The world will reject you, but Jesus accepts you. All you got to do is come to him as you are. And guess what he does when you do? He turns you out, and now he gives you your identity. He gives you your purpose, just like he did with me. I had no purpose in this life. I was looking for purpose, and guess what happened? He gave it to me, and this is the purpose, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the only true living God, not Muhammad, not Buddha, none of that. None of that will fulfill you, but Jesus Christ alone. If the moment you say, Lord Jesus comes into my heart, I promise you your whole life is gonna change, my brother. I promise you. God bless you guys, in Jesus' name. In the spirit. And the Lord showed me you like frustrated financially sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you being like, dang, like, and it's like everything you try to do, business-wise or like financially, seems to crash a lot. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah. A lot. A lot. And, you're, you're, and you do it legit. Like you, like you don't want to, you have, you have family that doesn't do it legit. Right. And, and wow. yeah. so, so we are at the infamous Lids. <laughs> I seen somebody comment, they said, is Lids holy or something? Because there's so many encounters. <laughs> so we're about to get to do what's called a Holy Ghost drive-by. We're just going to walk straight in there, being Pastor Joel. Right, Pastor Joel? Let's get it. And we're just going to see. I don't even know what's going to happen. We're just going to start talking to people. And we're just going to go up to them and interview them. Who knows? Let's get it. Yeah, so we in Lids, man. I love Lids. There's something about it. What's up, man? Cool, cool. How long you been working here, bro? Been here for a few months, man. Okay. Yeah, we from Florida, man. We just doing, we just, we just YouTubing right now. Oh, for real, that's what's up, man. You down to be in a quick little interview? Hey, what's up? What's your name, bro? Jay. Jay, I'm with, I'm with Pat. Meets me and Pastor Joel. So, 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 uh, so we're pastors. Okay. Do you, do you believe in Jesus? I do. You filled with the Holy Spirit? I do. When, when, when did you give your life to Christ? That's a great question. I'm not even, I don't even remember. It's been a few years now. Your family's Christian? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, can I tell you something? The Lord loves you, bro. And he wants you to know the gospel, like the good news and why it's good. Yeah. You've been through a lot, bro. I can see it in your eyes. A lot of pain. A lot of uh, abuse. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, a lot, a lot, a lot of trials and tribulations. But, but the Lord has protected you and gotten you through. I appreciate that, man. Am I right or wrong? No, you right. Where, where are you from in Houston? I ain't from Houston. Where you, where are you from? I'm from Ohio. Oh, man, Ohio's crazy, man. Yeah. It's a crazy area. It, it can be crazy. It ain't too bad. What part of Ohio are you from? Columbus. Man, Columbus is, is crazy. <laughs> a lot of murder out there, man. Well, you, you know about it? Yeah, I have friends. I'm, I'm from Broward. You know where Broward oh, is? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd, I'd have friends come from Ohio. A lot of, I went back when I was in the streets. A lot of shooters. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, but the gun laws are crazy out there. For sure. Yeah, same laws as here, man. Yeah. So let me tell you, I just want to let you know that, that Jesus Christ, he did die on the cross for your sins, bro. Do you know what that means? Oh, yeah, for sure. It means that his blood, because he was perfect, mm -hmm. is stained. Like, do you, can you live without blood? No. And everything flows through the blood, right? We were talking. So back in the day, they would have to sacrifice animals and take their blood mm -hmm. for, to atone for the sins, because the wages of sin is death. Like, if you sin one time, you're supposed to go to hell, mm -hmm. according to the spiritual laws of Yahweh. But then he sent his son, which is him. Because mm -hmm. think about it, this physical realm, can you access this, this physical realm without a body? No, not at all. You need a body, right? Yeah. So God came into a body, God incarnate, the, yeah. the man God, Jesus Christ, like God wrapped in flesh, came to be perfect, mm -hmm. lived his whole life and never sinned, go through everything we went through and keep his blood perfect. So when he got sacrificed on the cross, yeah. 
all the Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled. And he shed his blood. Now through, our, through faith in him, our sins are washed. Because have you lied before? Yeah. Have you stolen before? No. Obviously. Ever in your life? <laughs> Come on, we, it's, Maybe once or twice. But you see what I'm saying? So we all, yeah. we, we, we all supposed to go to hell. Mm -hmm. But now because of Jesus, we put our faith in him, he washes everything. Right. And, then, and, and every, even when we sin in the future, he's still going to wash it. Mm -hmm. As long as we continue to have a relationship with him. Yeah. It's relationship, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And he wants to have a relationship with you. I appreciate that. God, bro. No, Get, for sure. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I, what's your name again? Jay. Can I pray for you right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you show Jay more, Lord. Free him, free him of any depression, any anger, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Have angels surrounding him and bring him, bring him to you, Father. Draw him in in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brother. That, Already, man. That's real. And, and, and what does that mean to you? It means all money in, no money out. All money, let me see. All money in, no money out. But what's, what's, what's that? that? That's a dragon, right? Mm hmm What if I told you that's Chinese witchcraft? I ain't know that. What if I told you I, I used to be a warlock? Oh, for real? In Haiti, in New Orleans. Dang. I was I was actually a drug dealer too, big Damn. time, kingpin, and the Lord saved me. That's a blessing. Man. That right there, bro. Can I tell you, can I tell you the truth? De demons will attach to it, bro. Damn. Real talk, and, and it'll, it'll actually bring poverty on your life. It won't bring it won't bring blessings, because yeah. what you're doing is you're 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 trusting in a demonic spirit through Chinese witchcraft to give you to give you money. Hmm. Dang. I, I want hip to that. But you want you because you don't want that. Yeah, nah, nah. The Bible says my people will die for lack of knowledge. That's true. Would you, would, you, would you want to take it off? Yeah, I'll take it off. I'll throw it away for you if you want. No, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'll take care of it. Later on? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look into it, bro. The for dragon. Because sure, yeah. the Bible even says the great dragon. Mm -hmm. And the book of Revelation is the devil. Mm -hmm. And you're wearing a dragon. I think it's not even. Yeah, it's a dragon. Yeah, it's a dragon. Yeah. Kind of crazy, right? Yeah, it is crazy. God bless you, bro. For sure, man. You all right. Know. And on all, all social medias is Richard Lorenzo Jr. If you want to look it up. All right. What's up, man? So, yeah, we in here, man. We out here. Oh, they got the floor. The floor to fit it. Jarrell, how you feeling, Jarrell? Huh? Interview him. Yeah. Hey, in up, Spanish. ¿Cómo está? ¿Quieres hacer una entrevista rapidito? Dos minutos. Rápido. Dos minutos, dos minutos. ¿De qué? qué? ¿Cuál tú crees el propósito de la vida? ¿Propósito de la vida? Sí. Amar y querer cada uno. ¿Eh? Amar y querer cada uno. Amar y querer a cada uno. Sí. Qué respuesta tan bonita. Y, y después y después de que, que nosotros terminemos a amar y a querer a todo el mundo, ¿qué tú crees que pasa? Bueno, depende okay. el camino de cada uno. Si es bueno o malo. Al fin va a ser la decisión de ellos. De uno. So, so tú crees en Dios. ¿Cómo se llama Dios? Mi, mi padre, mi amor querido. Pero, pero ¿cómo se llama? Dios. Está Jesús, es el hijo. Jesús es el hijo de Dios. Es el hijo de Dios. Ok. Y si yo te digo que Jesús es Dios en la carne. Sí. Eh, ahí tienen razón. Porque él, él, él vino, él vino, él, 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 él dijo yo soy Dios. Si tú me has visto, has visto al Padre. Eso es diciendo que tú, que tú no. estás viendo a Dios. Mm. Ahí me agarraste. <risa> Eso fue lo que él dijo. Sí. Si me has visto, has visto al Padre. Sí. ¿Ves? ¿Ves lo que digo? Sí, eso es la muerte hasta el fin. De Exacto. Día. ¿Y quién, quién es el único que puede dar vida eterna? Jesús. Dios. Dios sí. so, eso significa que Jesús es Dios. Sí. Y cuando tú pones tu fe en Él, en, la, en el sacrificio que Él hizo en la cruz, fue enterrado y resucitó de la muerte, ya significa que Dios te da vida eterna. Correcto. ¿Puedo orar por ti rápido? Sí. Padre, en nombre de Jesús, te quiero dar las gracias por mi hermano. Yo te pido que él tenga un encuentro contigo y que tú le enseñes lo, la verdad. La verdad, mucha verdad. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Muchas gracias. Dios te bendiga, mi hermano. Busca, busca en la Biblia, busca más. Bueno. Aleluya. Dios te bendiga. Ve yo bendigo tu familia en el nombre de Jesús. Wow. Wow. He was like, I, I was telling him, I was literally telling him like, like, you know, what, what do you think the purpose of life? And he was, he said, you know, to, to do the, the, the will of God and stuff like that, right? And um, I told him, so, so you believe in God then? He said, yeah. I said, what, what's God's name? He said, well, God, you know, my, my father, but I said, but what's his name though? 
And he goes, well, there's Jesus that's the son of God. And I was like, okay. So what if I tell you that God, I mean, Jesus is God in the flesh? He's like, hmm. Well, da -da. and then I told him, because Jesus actually said that if you see me, you've seen the Father. So you're claiming to be God. And then I, told, I also asked him, I also asked him, who, who, who is the only one that could give eternal life? He said, well, Jesus. I said, well, then you're saying that Jesus is God. He's like, oh, you got me there. So, and I told him, the moment you place your faith in what he did on the crucifixion, the burial and resurrection, his blood, the moment you put your faith in that, you receive eternal life. And I pray for him, that he has an encounter with him, that, that the Lord reveals more truth to him. So, in the future, that sea was planted is going, is going to get watered in the, in the mighty name of Jesus, and it's going to flourish. It's going to flourish. Amen. Y'all seen it. His ministry coming soon. <laughs> Amen. Español, ya tu, ya tu sabe. Ya tu sabe. Walking by and she said, can I be in an interview? So you believe in Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. You believe he's God? Yes. So if you believe in Jesus, why do you believe in reincarnation? Oh, Lord. Because I don't feel like our soul dies. So then why do you believe you come back if there's a heaven and hell? Is there an end to this? I just don't know how to answer your question. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, yeah, you're about to go on a Nike app run. Or a night, we're about to go on a, a two mile run, Lord willing. And um, you know, we spent a long day at the mall walking around, knocking the front. I'm a little drained, you know, evangelizing, all that, but I believe that this is gonna pick us up. We're gonna go do this. We're gonna come back, pray a little bit, get into the shower. Like a 30 minute prayer to get us lit up, get in the shower, get fly for tonight, go back to the conference spot, grab some grub. Yeah, man, it's been a long day. Y'all see the vlog. This stuff gets tiring, but the Lord gives us strength. As y'all can see, it's not too hot, but it's hot because we in Texas, bro. It's kind of hot. So we're gonna go out there. We're just gonna go run, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I thought it's not, gonna, I thought it's not that hot, but then the sun the starts sun beaming. Is, you know, it's gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. But it, it, you know, that, you know how people say the runner's high, and then the Holy Ghost high together, and then you know, shower is gonna wake us up. We're gonna be straight. We're gonna thug it out. Probably do some more evangelism. Go and get in some worship tonight with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's another day. What do you think, Pastor? We're gonna get it in. No days off. Only when the Lord says days Hard work. off. Bible says what about diligent? Prosper. Yep. The diligent will prosper. Mm -hmm. Lazy will be in poverty. So. Work hard, my brothers and sisters. It pays off in the end. Unload it. Yep, it, it tracks your runs. That's what we've been doing. Pastor Joel with his revival team has been, he's been tracking all his team and, and making sure that they send screenshots in their group chat. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it with the elders in the church just to, my own, my own accountability. We're just trying to stay on point, man. Get like a mile or two in a day. Try to work our way up to three, four, five, maybe 10, who knows. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna go run. Bye-bye. What's up, family? So, we were driving earlier, and we were thinking about what we were gonna eat at. And then we seen this taco, this uh, taco food truck, and then we seen this, come over here. Cause I was like, man, should we eat here? It says, Jesus, I trust in you. So we gonna trust these tacos. Hello. Hola. How you doing? Hello, bien. Uh, we're gonna get... Get lo mejor que usted tiene. Most popular. Most popular. Huh? Yeah. Si tiene el Espíritu Santo. Tienes el Espíritu Santo. Tienes el Espíritu Santo. Hey guys, so we wait. We're waiting for our food. As you guys can see over there, the food truck. And we got to get some drinks, like some soda water or maybe something, I don't know, something to, to wash down our food. And I see this liquor store. Uh, we just felt led to expose alcohol again. Where does it say? Look at that. Look at that. Show them. Right there it says Lotto, Tobacco, Cigarettes, and Spirits. As you guys can see right there, it literally says Spirits. It's, isn't it crazy how it's wine and spirits, demonic spirits? I'm telling you, man, this stuff is real. So we about to go in there and expose this real quick. God is good. Let's get it. Y'all ready? Do you have any, do you have any Topi Chico? Is that fine? In the front? Oh, they got the big joint. Hey, Topi Chico, some good soda, uh, Mexican soda water. Look at that, mineral water. They got the one, got the one with the twist in line. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, where are you from? Pardon? Where are you from? Can you guess? Uh, Vietnamese? Yeah. Yes. From my accent, right? Oh, okay, wow, that's nice. Anything else, guys? No, that's it. Can I ask you a quick question? How long have you been working here? We're doing a vlog. How long have you been working here? One week. One week, wow. I'm a new baby. Can I ask you a question? I see it in the front, it says uh, cigarettes, uh, beer, and then it says spirits, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean, spirits? Spirit 
here is those liqueur that you can mix with other soft drinks. Okay. Yeah. And then wh why do you think it's called spirits? You ever think about that? No. Maybe it makes you feel happier when you have something, you know, like with alcohol. Because, you know, what, 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 what is it? what's a spirit? Your spirits inside, you know, like God, like Jesus inside yourself. Yeah, and then also like uh, in, the, in the spirit realm, right? Demons and angels. Mm -hmm. you, do you believe in Jesus? I do. You're a Christian? Yes. Uh, me too. <laughs> I'm a pastor. Ah. We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting some Mexican food and we decided to come here to get some of this because we need something to drink. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually uh, it's demons, like demonic spirits mm -hmm. from the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Like in witchcraft, a lot of times they, and you know what witchcraft is? It's bad. They summon the demons into alcohol and cigars. It's crazy. I used to be addicted to alcohol. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's, it's a depressant and it, and it causes people to do like evil stuff, right? Yeah. People black out. They're being, they're being possessed. So, like, you know how to control yourself, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, can I pray for you real quick? Thank you so much. What's your name? Loe. Yeah. Loe, Loe. Yeah. Pray right now. Father God, bless her, Lord. I pray that this, this, this week, Lord, that, this, that you protect her, that, that you give her a pay raise, Lord, if this is the right job. And I just pray you have angels surrounding her in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless Thank you. So you. You're, you're God from bless England? You. You're from England? No, from Australia. Australia. Yeah. You hear the accent. Thank you. God bless. Thank you all right. All right. Oh, well, look, as you guys can see, too, they got the Lazarus out up there. That's, that's, a, whole, that's a whole altar. Because what they think is that all that Lazarus is going to protect them. And if you study witchcraft, like voodoo, Lazarus is, is, is actually supposed to like the like the, the highest, their highest ranking demon, they'll put it behind it. Crazy, right? Let's get out of here. I rebuke every word curse, snare, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let this man torment so much hell. I thank you for the grace that sits upon him to tread in uncharted territories. Father, in Jesus' name, I rebuke the scheme of, the, of, of hell <laughs> to even cause new faces and people to come into his life to try to take ownership or son him and try to bring him into their circles and their clans and their covens. The devil's a liar. We put a hedge of protection around this gift. May he always be sober because he has history with you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it. He's restoring the honor back to the door. Put your hands to receive that Father, I thank you. Hey, what's up, guys? It is day three. As, as you can see, the falcon doors are rising. And we're going to the Mantles Conference for day three. I'm preaching. <laughs> oh, this is uh, Joel. Joel, it's a pleasure, man. It's an honor. I'm great. I'm grateful to be here, bro. Oh, I see. I see. I see on TikTok. Yeah, I told you. You got a following on TikTok. A little bit. Glory to God. God I was using it. God's using it. What? Yeah. Dang. Uh, you're on. You're on TikTok too. Not on TikTok, but I, I've seen. I've seen like your videos, like, you know, like Hallelujah. before, like my first cousin. That's crazy. Same Lorenzo. <laughs> yeah, that's so deep. <laughs> that's deep. Same grandma. Same, same generation wow. of blessing. Our dads, our dads look like twins. Yeah. They look like <laughs> I don't know if we resemble each other at all. I've been probably like just you up like a little bit right here. I told him not to go so far back. But he did. He did good, bro. He actually just got the whole gospel. He's coming to the Robert tomorrow. For real. Yeah, mm -hmm. Young kid. I felt that vibe. Like he said, he, and then like the guy before him, Christian, he was preaching to him too. He's dealing with demons. He was like grabbing kids' dreams and he's taxing. He, He's like, bro, I've been giving up weed. I gave up weed. I've been giving up alcohol. I, I just feel like God's calling us. So he's coming tomorrow. Wow. When, when you walk in your purpose, everything has a purpose. You know? Hey. <laughs> it's called the Kairos moment. Get everybody like that. Let's worship. Let's worship. Sound center picking up the sound equipment. Going to the revival. 
It's about to be a movie. It's about to be a zoovy. <laughs> it's about to be a heaven, heavenly, groovy thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> wavy, wavy thing. You know what I mean? Wavy thing. No rude boy. Holy thing. You know what I mean? Holy vibes. You know what I mean? Real, real rude boy in the spirit. You know what I mean? I ain't Jamaican now. <laughs> hey, don't speak in tongues. You need an uh, interpreter. Now, where's the interpreter? You can't do it. No interpreter, do not speak in tongue or. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. With you, I will break in pieces the horses and its riders. With you, I will break in pieces the chariots and riders. With you, I will also, with you, uh, with you also, will break in pieces man and woman. With you, I will break in pieces old and young. With you, I will break in pieces the young man and the maiden. With you, I will also break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you, I will break in pieces the farmer and his yoke of oxen. With you, I will break in pieces. Governors and rulers, and with you, and I will repay Babylon and all the inhabitants of Jacob, and all the evil they have done. And Zion, in your sight, says the Lord, Behold, I am, I am again. Father, I pray right now that you use fast the rich as the battle axe to destroy any chains of religion. Bring revelation with the battle rights to destroy you, Father. Yes, Let your yes, presence yes, be yes, there yes, before him, before he walks into the state, before he walks into the altar. Let you be there, Father. Let you be there, Father. And use him. Grab him with your right hand oh, yes, and yes, use him as the battle axe, Father. Thank you, Father, that he's going to break nation. Thank you that he's going to break any, any yoke. Any yoke. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. Rabba Kayano Rabba Yo, what up guys, it is day three. We are back at the Norris Conference Center. I'm gonna be preaching a word on the mantle of evangelism. It's a powerful revelation the Lord gave me. I'm here with Pastor Jarrell. Say what up. God bless you guys. My actual blood cousin, same last name as me. Uh, Eugene is here too, we're about to go meet up with him. I just got a cut. Preach the gospel to the barber, he got touched. Man, God is good, man. I believe it's gonna be powerful. Hey, what the heck? Bro, this is not my car. I told you I said I'm gonna run into my childhood friend, Fred. Wow. Tim. Wow. How you doing, man? How you doing, Fred? Oh, nice to meet you. How's it going? Hi, I'm Demi. Nice to meet you. Kevin, Kevin. Oh, he's, he's back home. Wow. That's crazy. Hey, what? 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 I was looking at all You brought the family here? No, I'm here, I'm here just with these two. Actually, oh, my okay. cousin, you I'm not That's my childhood friend that I was raised with since middle school, since seventh grade, when he came to the Philippines. Then he came to the Philippines. I met him when he was uh, in middle school in the gym locker room, asking him where he got his shoes at. And now look. I mean, like literally my best friend in high school, only Asian kid on our basketball team. And um, yeah, man, uh, it's crazy, bro. In the entire city of Houston, we run into them. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, you see, if you think God ain't real, um, I'm, we're from Broward. We ain't never raised in Broward. All the way in Houston, Texas. Is it okay? You personally? Yeah, I think it will take this. Oh. Yeah, man, crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. The Lord is good. The Lord is mighty. I'm gonna preach this word. Now this is this is this is increase my faith even more. This whole trick is increasing my faith, man. I'm about to preach fire of God right now. Preach exactly <laughs> what the Lord wants me to preach. The Lord wants me to preach about the mantle of digital evangelism. Digital evangelism. For the social media marketing Christians, the social media evangelists. Not too many people um, I believe that this is a call from God, what it is to be a revivalist on the internet. Not too many people want to do it because they think it's wrong, they think it's just them trying to promote themselves. But if you have a revelation that we're supposed to shine our light on top of the hill, how you doing, sir? All right. Thank you. And if you understand that, it'll be simple because you have peace in your heart. 
kind of revelation. That's what they should. So let's get it. What's up, friends? It's Chris the Olive Brother. We'll see you guys. 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 we will see you guys 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 we will see you Plant that seed and just show love. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, like, just yeah, that's it. ask for the higher power. That's it. Because that's what I did. I mean, I was in Greece Station out there. I just said, God. I was, I was like, higher power, who are you? And I heard an interview. Uh, you heard the voice. I heard a voice after that. Yeah. I was crying. I was like, ah, like who are you? Who are you? And then I heard, I'm going to show you now. Yeah. Right here, in my left ear. I'm going to show And I was like, am I tripping? Like, did I just hear that? I doubted it, like, a lot. But I, but I, this peace came over me. And I was like, man, I, got, uh, I guess I'm on the right path. <laughs> and then that's when I left Greece and went to Cali and started like taking it to a whole nother level with the weed. Mm. And then that's when everything like just ramped up, like deep broke me. So how do you, how, how do you know Jesus? Like he rose from the dead, he's mm -hmm. the Messiah. You're certain. You know, because some people talk about God, but they don't talk about Jesus. Yes. You know, you know, like, how do you know? The Holy Spirit gave me, gives me the revelation. No, it does. The, the son cannot be revealed to anyone without the Holy Spirit. So the father draws you to the son. You have any, once you believe, you have to believe. Mm -hmm. Once you believe the minute you believe in your heart, right? Confess from your mouth, Romans 10, 9. The Holy Spirit fills you. And then a revelation of Christ becomes so real to you. That the desires of your heart change. You start getting convicted. You start wanting to seek him more as you, you know, as you're praying. You're just like, man, I just, I just, I know he's real. You know what I'm saying? And then when you were baptized in the Holy Spirit, it also takes it to a whole new level. Like it does, bro. You can receive the Holy Spirit and not be baptized in the Holy Spirit, according to the Word of God. Mm. Like when Jesus rose from the dead, right? When he, when he rose, what did he say? He said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. To his disciples, breath on him. It says he breathed on them. And when they received it, for 40 days he was disciple. But then he told them, go away to Terry in Jerusalem to be in dual power from high. <coughs> so why did, why did Jesus tell them, if you already breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit, why would he tell them to go wait for the Holy Spirit? It's because the Holy Spirit has not come upon them in power mm. to be a witness onto Jerusalem, Samaria, all over. He had to go Terry in the upper room. 120, they tarried for 10 days, worshiping God, praising God. At this point, they seen him die, rise, and then ascend to heaven in front of them. Like, like literally, like, like, so that they're just like, bro, I don't, I don't care what, you see. I'm just gonna go do it. <laughs> they're probably fasting too. And they were just worshiping God, and then boom, that's when the Holy Spirit came like a gust of wind. And fell upon them, bro, baptized with cloven tongues of fire. So they start speaking in tongues. And then 3,000 people all understood the majority of them. Actually, 3,000. 3,000. They got pretty much in their own language. So there was more than 3,000 because they were mocking us. They were saying, you know, at 9 a.m., you know, oh, they're drunk. And Peter was like, for it's 9 a.m., we talking about the right? Then, But they all understood them in their own language. 120 people speaking in what sounds like that. You know, you ever heard about the Quakers? Um, it's a denomination from like the, I think the 1700s. The, the reason they called them Quakers, they came from England. They left the Catholic Church. They called them Quakers because they would speak in tongues. Sound like that. Hmm. So tongues is an unintelligible language. Like you don't, you can't intellectually like understand it. Just like if I speak Mandarin to you right now or Russian, right. you don't understand it. It's, you know what sound is? It's, it's a vibration of your organs creating a frequency, a, a pitch. Like it's, it's sound. That's all languages are. That's really all it is, bro. Which is the same, the same as the instrument. You see what I'm saying? So, so like literally, like when you when you speak in tongues, you can't understand it because you don't have the gift of the, you don't know it unless you have the gift of interpretation. Now, if you have the gift of interpretation, you can interpret it for a prophetic declaration onto people. But then people say, oh, you can't speak in tongues without an interpreter. That's not true. Because Paul said, do not forbid to speak in the tongues, but make sure everything is done in decency and order. He said, I speak in more tongues than all of you. He said, even though I speak in the tongues of men and angels, if I don't, if I don't love, right? So he spoke in the tongues of angels, rising angels. It's, it's the Holy Spirit interceding. It's the word of God proceeding from your mouth. 
literally the word of God coming out of you when you speak in tongues. And the Bible says that the angels move off what? The word of God. So speaking in tongues is literally God praying through you, bro. It's God praying through you to him, himself. It's the perfect will of God. And that's when angels move. That's why I think a lot of people pray in tongues for, uh, for hours. They pray in tongues for hours because it's just so edifying. It builds up your faith. Right? Think about this. I just call this right now a pastor. The Bible says in the book of Jude, it, it's to build up your most holy faith, praying in the, in the spirit, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You're increasing in faith because what's coming out of you is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Bro, it just hit me, bro. That, mm. That's crazy. <laughs> I never thought about that. You got that on video? Oh, praise God. <laughs> that's a deep revelation. It's the word of God that's coming out of your, your belly, the word of God. So that's how you increase in faith. Yeah. Bro, I'm using that one. Thank well, you, Holy Ghost. I'll cut it and send it to you. <laughs> so, so you always got it. Man, you've been reading the word. You've been reading it out loud. Hearing. Exactly. Hearing it, yeah. Because the Bible says hearing, right? So hearing and, and then constantly... What the Bible says, if you have an ear to hear, listen to what the Spirit is saying. Because if we can read the scriptures, but have more revelation. You need the Holy Ghost. I read the Bible like when I was like a little kid without the Holy Spirit. I hated it. I fell asleep. Yeah. But my dad actually was like, read the Bible. Actually, Grandma Connie's Bible or something like that. She came one time to visit, and I just was like, nah, bro. God, like, the whole Genesis thing sounds so fictional to me. I was in middle school, I just was so like, now I'm straight. But now with the like the Holy Spirit, it's like, <laughs> and then you can hear the Spirit give you revelation. You stop and pause and meditate, which means Salah. And you're just like, oh my gosh. Wow. And then like, even while you're reading visions, reminders, people, situations. That's why the word is alive. Because you can read the same scripture over and over again and get a new revelation. Yes. It's yes. only God, Holy Spirit. And that's why people get religious when they when they read the word without the Spirit. The word's the same. Like if you read the word without the Holy Ghost, the word will be the same thing every time, and you'll think you know there's nothing else. But wow. But, but that's impossible. Like no, that, that means God's alive. I can't lie. I think I'm supposed to preach. How y'all doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, first and foremost, I just want to honor um, Apostle, Apostle Kevin and his wife, uh, Pastor Lisa. I know they're not here right now. But yes, I honor that. And also The Rock, The Rock, uh, Houston, San Antonio. How many people here from The Rock? Y'all go to The Rock? Oh, yeah, cool, cool. So, I don't know if y'all know this, but um, the name of our ministry back in uh, Florida is The Rock. But it's still, it's still R R O C for the Remnant Revival Outreach Center. So, we like, we like cousins, we like family. You know. <laughs> so, man, glory be to God. So, first, I just want to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I give you all the glory, and I ask that you speak through me. I pray that it brings transformation, conviction, the renewal of the mind, edification, encouragement, Holy Spirit, have your way. We bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, it's a man's conference, right? So we're going to talk about mantles. I want to talk about the difference between the anointing and a mantle. Very important to understand the difference between the two, or you you, 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 could, be, you could fall to the condemnation of the enemy, not understanding it, okay? So I'm going to bring out some, um, I'm going to use the word of God, but I want to start with my testimony. How many people know my testimony? All right, so I'm going to be very brief, not too long, but um. I come from witchcraft. I was deep in witchcraft. I was deep in voodoo, santeria, um, different types of new age practices. I sold drugs. Um, I went to the military. Um, I went to college. I had cars. I had properties. I, I tried to do everything possible in this life to be successful. Wow. And what tormented me my entire life and bothered me so much was I didn't understand the purpose of life. Because I had all these successful things, right? that people wanted, but I never had fulfillment. That's why I went to the woman. I would always have many women. I would always be partying, drinking, drugs. Always seemed to get away with things. My friends would get arrested. My friends would, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't make it to where I made it, but I'd always somehow get through. But it was the prayers of my grandmother, amen. Yeah. So 
I didn't know all this though. I didn't know my, my grandma was a Holy Spirit filled woman, woman of God. I was raised in the Catholic Church. So my father, which comes from the, the bloodline of my grandmother, married a woman, my mother, who I honor both of them. Um, she's she was Catholic. She actually just got saved recently. So I was raised in the Catholic Church. In the Catholic Church, they don't teach you anything. I was just speaking to my brothers about that. They take you, you go to CCD and they tell you, you know, listen to what we say, do these these works, and you'll be saved. Right? Who was raised in the Catholic Church? Anybody here? So you know what I'm saying? Reconciliation, confirmation, CCD, da -da 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 -da, all this stuff, and you have no idea what you're doing, you're just forced by your family. So I hadn't I didn't know who Jesus was. But I always had a night to speak to the Father, because my, my biological father, he would always tell me, look, you can pray your Catholic prayer, that's fine, but at the end just speak to God. And the Bible says, and we're talking about this, that no one comes to the Son unless the Father draws him in. So I didn't know, I didn't know I was speaking to the Father. I thought it was just a higher power. I would always do my little, you know, whatever, thinking that it protected me. And man, the Father drew me in. So when I was in Haiti doing food, when I was in New Orleans doing Santeria, when I was balancing chakras with crystals, when I had when I was burning sage, when I had all the altars, when I was selling hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of marijuana. Monthly, when I was selling Molly, when I was selling lean, when I was when I was when I was credit card scamming, when I was doing all these things, the Father had His hand on me, and He loved me before I even knew Him. Right? Thank you, Lord. So I want I want you guys to have a quick picture of why I'm so radical, because people say I'm, I'm too radical sometimes. They say, how do you have this boldness? You know, people think there's an impartation of boldness. Yeah. But I can impart. And look, there is. But I'm gonna tell you something. It's not the laying on of hands. It's right. revelation yes. of why I'm bold. Come on, sir. It's because I was empty. I was lost. Yeah. I was deep into everything you can imagine. And I had no purpose. So when the father began to send the evangelist to me at the liquor store, at the barber shop, in the middle of a park walking their dog, when it was so super coincidental on social media, I see a Christian, a Christian man casting a demon out of a witch. Mm. That was the title. And I clicked on it. And at this point, I was looking for, for videos on chakra balancing. It says, it says, Reiki healer delivered from demons. Mm. And I'm seeing this man from the Netherlands casting demons out of his witch. Yeah, I get delivered. I'm like, what is it? I felt something moving him. My God. And I told my, I told my girl at the time, who was pregnant with my first child, hey, Carly, come here. Christian's got power. <laughs> and, and that's what led me to go even deeper. They had a little map on the, on, on the website, and I started you know, hitting people up and asking them. They started praying for me. And the Father really started moving. My now, I met, a, I met a man of God, like, like I said, at the park. He was, uh, it was actually in my neighborhood, a little neighborhood park by a lake. He was walking his dog. And it was the first time I decided to open up the Bible. I hadn't even opened it up yet. I bought one off of Amazon, finally got in, went out to the little lake by the park area, sat down, opened it up. And right before I could even read a page, he stopped and said, hey, what is that? I'm just like, is this the Bible, man? He's like, well, you know, I'm a pastor. Oh my God. What a coincidence, right? Yeah. He sat down with me for about three hours. And I'm telling him, I have these on my head. Evil eyes, crystal. I'm a whole warlock. Hey, man, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. It's my ancestral spirit. He's like, no, no, no. It's just the name of Jesus. Only yeah. white guy. Is this the name of Jesus? I'm like, bro, but, but what about just the name of Jesus? Go home and just use his name. Yeah. 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 Start in the book of Romans when you get home. Okay, I'm going to go start in the book of Romans, whatever, bro. I go home, start reading it, it begins to convict me. I begin to feel something. Within a few days, I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ in my apartment alone. I was knocked to the ground. Literally, Jesus came. I knocked the physical and the spiritual. Knocked me down for 20 to 20 to 30 minutes. I don't really know how long it was. It was long. I was blacked out in a way. Manifesting demons coming out of me, spinning stuff up, vomiting, yeah, like being delivered from demons by Jesus Christ Himself. And that after I got up and I felt the most overwhelming feeling of peace, and just knew deep within it wasn't head knowledge; it was in my spirit. My spirit man was made perfect at that moment because I believed in Jesus Christ in my heart. I was reading the Book of Romans and I said, "It's Jesus. He's the highest power." I put you see what I'm saying? The Bible says if you believe in your heart, you confess in your mouth. Right yes. Romans 10 9. People think you have to say, Lord. And you don't. If you look at the translation, it says, it means master. Right. Yes. Highest power. Right. The yes. king of kings. The, the highest of the most high. Yes. So I believe that it was Jesus. And 
That's when the encounter came. He filled me with his spirit. I spoke in tongues after being delivered from demons. I didn't know what I was doing, and it wasn't demonic tongues. I didn't understand why I had so much joy in my belly, and I just kept saying, hey, you so so good. Who did that? Stop it. Who's supposed to do that? And I told, I told my girl at the time, I said, look, I just, it's Jesus. She came home from work. I said, we can't fornicate. Look, we can't sleep in the same bed. She cursed me out. You put me through all this. I'm seven months pregnant, and now I'm not your girl, and you want to sleep in a different bed? How dare you? And I'm just like, look, I got to sleep in a different bed. I can't fornicate. I was being discipled by one of the people off that map. And I was like, I don't care. I know it's Jesus. I got all my altars. I had, I had altars with statues. I was putting salt in corners. I was doing ritual baths. I had all different types of sage, saging my vehicle, saging my, my apartment. I had, like I said, evil eyes, Egyptian crosses, all that stuff. And I took all of it, put it in a bag, went to the middle of the woods and burned it. Wow. Amen. Yeah. And the Lord just began to reveal himself. And, and every day was something new. Miracles happening. I was obsessed with his word. I just kept reading his word. I just yeah. wanted more revelation, watching YouTube videos. Getting, receiving more deliverance. I needed more deliverance. I had soul ties. I had rejection. I had, I had, I had generational curses. I was, I was learning about deliverance so early on. And I just wanted to do the same thing for others. I wanted to set the captives free. Yeah. So all I would do was go out all day. I had drug money that was running out, right? I wasted all my drug money. For, for real. Full time ministry starting off. I didn't even know what that, what that meant. I just was, I'm not going to work. I'm just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna run through this drug and I'm just gonna read the word and I'm gonna seek God all day and I'm gonna trust yeah. him. I would go to Home Depot's and Walmart's. I would go to Publix's, if you know where that, what that is in Florida. Yeah. I would go to different spots and just tell everyone my testimony. I didn't even know the gospel. Like, I knew the gospel, but I didn't understand how to, how to communicate it. Yeah. I didn't understand that it was the power of God and the salvation. I didn't understand what the dunamis power of God and the salvation was. Yeah. I didn't get it. I didn't understand. But I'm going to tell you, it's Jesus. I'm telling you. I was in this, 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 this. It's Jesus Christ. Look, I don't fornicate no more. I don't watch porn no more. I got delivered. I, 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 I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And people would just start crying. Mm. They would just start crying, and I'd be praying. I'd just be like, Lord, just, just, just go inside of me. Go inside of me. <laughs> I just knew that I had to go tell everybody. I'm, but then within a year of being saved, I'm baptizing people, right? I'm learning more about baptism. I'm, I'm laying hands on the sick and they're being healed. But then I think it was about five to six months being saved, I was already casting out demons. Because I was studying it. Yeah. You know the Bible says that, that you, you can be delivered through knowledge. Yes, that's right. You see people say, you know, put something in love. That if, okay, if you have knowledge with no love, then you'll be prideful. Yeah. But yeah. my people die for a lack of knowledge. And knowledge can deliver you. So we need knowledge, but we need love. You got, you got knowledge with no love, you're gonna you're gonna fall, right? After pride came with the great fall, so I was getting a lot of knowledge. Knowledge. And my girl, she came to Christ, right? She yeah. came to Christ. Yeah. And then a few months later we got married, had our first child blessed. Praise and, God. Praise God. She got delivered, she got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Praying, you know, speaking in tongues, and she was already very prophetic, had that gift, right? Yeah. The gifts of the calling her without repentance, you know, the dreams, and yeah. she had such a flat on the dreams, and now she's in Christ, now she's, she's learning, she's learning more about her gifts, her gifting and calling. So we're just seeking God, and we're seeking God. This, this boldness came from, from a revelation of Jesus Christ. My cousin, right here, right? I'm going to tell y'all something. You stand right there, raise your hand. I stand up, yeah. Eugene, right here. I sold drugs with him in the world. Yeah. He's my first cousin on my, on my bloodline of the Lorenzo's with my grandma was an apostle, right? And Puerto Rico, yeah. powerful, wow. powerful, powerful woman of God. Wow. He comes from the same blood, blood line. We used to move pounds of weed together through the mail. Wow. He got saved before I did. Yeah. He used to live. Yeah. So that revelation of Jesus that was, that was revealed to me by the Holy Spirit, I just, I couldn't stop seeking him. I wanted everything he had. I was like, God, I want to cast demons out. I want to heal the sick. And God would send me to, how, to, to, to people's houses. I mean, I would be people in the streets. I'd be praying, people getting falling out, getting delivered, people that can't even walk, getting up and walking. And I'm just, I thought it was normal. I wasn't introduced to 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 the to the, to the church thing. Yeah. That's right. I, that's I didn't right. understand that. Because that's yeah, yeah, not just yeah. like I, 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 I'm in the streets. I used to be that guy that said the building is demonic. I was I was the opposite of the religious I was the, I was religious on the other side. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I didn't understand like I was going against the church because I was so established, but I had no revelation. I had no no I, I needed more revelation. I needed more Bible. Right. 
Yes. So as the Lord transitioned me into the church, I was like, wait, people come to the, to the altar? I don't got to go out there and talk to them? And then in the spirit, the presence of God is already getting worship, and then, like, this is easier. Come on, oh, people can. And I'm looking up the side. Wow. It was so much freezing. So, and I, I, I thought everybody evangelized. I thought everybody, I thought everybody needs the loss. I thought it was normal. I was like, wait, you want me to help with the evangelism team? But I thought that that's, wait, y'all, y'all never touched, y'all never preached the gospel to somebody. You never laid hands on somebody got healed, but you got the same Holy Ghost I do. Yeah. There's no truth in the Holy Spirit, right? So I'm just like, am I, am I tripping? And it puffed me up. It, it, it puffed me up. Christians have been Christians for 30 years coming to me for advice. You know? And I'm two years saved. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one. I'm the one. Don't right. touch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm better than this bishop and this apostle. And I got dropped. God dropped me. I had a uh-huh. great fall. And I needed, I thank the Father for that because I needed that. Yeah. And he humbled me. So I want to talk about the mantle of evangelism. Yeah, and specifically, I want to talk about not only the mantle for uh, for evangelism, but also the digital evangelist. Mm-hmm. We're going to break some religion tonight. Yeah. Amen. 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 Right. So again, when I first came to Christ, I was casting out demons, healing the sick. I was against the digital spaces. People that reported healings and deliverances, I would say that's that's wrong. The Bible says, you know, do it in private. I didn't have revelation that Jesus Christ casted out demons in front of everybody. Yes, yeah. He healed the sick in front of everybody. Yeah. And it was recorded. Yes. What do we do? What do you do with a, with a, with a, with a video camera? You record. Right. Wow. So I didn't have that. I was religious. So when God brought me out of that, and I started learning, wow. So if I get one encounter on video, it can not only save this one person, but maybe. Ten other people. Yes. Yes. Wow, that's, that's smarter because I wanted to win souls. Right. Yeah. A man who wins souls is what? Wise. Wise, right? So I was like, I want to win souls. I want to store treasures in heaven. And that's what the, the, the Lord began to break religion and teach me about this. So the mantle of evangelism and the anointing. I had the anointing, but I didn't have the mantle. Mm-hmm. So having the anointing to, to, to cast out demons to the sick and, 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 and win souls, but not the, the mantle led me into condemnation at one point. Because I would see other men of God on the internet, on social media, other half of the churches, doing it at such a rapid rate that it would it would bother me. And I would say, God, I'm, I'm out here in the streets for four or five hours, and I'm and I'm not even winning any souls, you know, maybe like once every two weeks. Like, like what's going on? I'm like, I'm anointed for this, Lord. You called me for this. Is it me? Is it me? And I would, I would be in such condemnation and grief, crying out to God, why? Why? And the Lord had to reveal to me, because you're not... You don't have the mantle yet. You need the authority. You need the mantle needs to come upon you so that you can begin to do that and you have more, more authority and power. Amen. Amen. So that the anointing gives you the empowerment. Anointing means empowerment. The mantle is when you're clothed in a yes. specific, a specific yes. assignment. Yes. Yes. A specific, like God has said, look, now you are, I'm going to exalt you. And you are my son. Everybody will know. And, and you go. And now I'm going to, you can do everything that you've learned, but now it's going to be at a rapid rate. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was um, about a year ago, um, I had given up on social media. I tried. Me and my, my little brother Kevin, we tried to post some videos. Nobody nobody liked it. Nobody saw it. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Like I was like, they could pay for advertisements. And I would invest like a hundred bucks. Nobody. I'm just like, I guess this is ain't me. I'm just not going to do it. So we had a small house church and it began to grow. You know, I have a spiritual father out actually out in Dallas. And we, we, we began to learn how to pastor. I just gave up the social media thing. I was like, I'm just going to be a pastor. And hopefully this house church actually does well. And it started growing. Everyone locally started hearing about it, coming for deliverance and healing. And I just was like, okay, I guess I'm just going to be a local pastor. But then the Lord took me one time in prayer. He took me up into a, a, a trance. Y'all know what a trance is? Yeah. Okay, it's real. Peter, right? He got taken into a trance, right? Yeah. yeah. You see, even in, in the Old Testament, so in the New Testament, so I got taken into a trance. The Lord showed me, he, he showed me a basketball court, and he showed me that I was a mascot. I looked like a, the mascot from my high school back then when I was in, um, in, uh, in Broward. And there was a band when I was jumping around like a mascot. He said, look, that's who you're going to be for me. You're going to be a mascot. And he said, I'm going to make your name a household name. I came back. And I had no idea what that meant. A household name, how's that gonna happen? A bangle, a mascot. I'm talking to my wife and I'm just like, I think he might want us to do videos now. I, I think it's time. Yeah. And I just had faith. We went out there, first encounters in the gas station. I'm, I told my little brother Kevin, bring the camera. And I'm telling you guys, I'd be in the parks for hours trying to get one video before I got before I, I received the answer. Yeah. I'm talking about hours. Like I would be like, come on. 
people would be like, okay, yeah, I just want the camera. I'd be like, all right. And people would get touched by God. I was still, I was still preaching the gospel. I was still praying for healing and deliverance. I was, I, I kind of gave up with the camera thing. But when I received that mantle, when the Lord said, it's time. You're going to be, a, you're going to be a digital evangelist. I'm going to use you to bring revival to the nations on the digital spaces because that's why I'm doing a new thing. When he, when, when God said it's time, first encounter in the gas station, she didn't even know the camera was there. She forgot. We asked her to do, hey, can you want to do an interview? She was like, yeah, she forgot the camera was there, getting delivered from demons. I'm talking about crime, all types of stuff, right? Crazy. A, a one woman gave up her crystal, got her full, her, her, you seen the one where she, seen that video, where her foot got completely healed. And I'm like, if she forgot there was a camera, these people didn't even, the, the, the mantle was so strong, like God, God's, God's will, God's will was so powerful that these people didn't even, they didn't even know. They were looking at me like, oh yeah, I forgot the camera was there, you can post it, go ahead, I don't even care. What? Right? And I'm like, wow, this is completely different, Kevin. We're going to malls, and people are coming up to us. My God. I'm like, literally, hey, you doing interviews? <laughs> yeah. Wow. You want to do an interview? Next thing you know, they're crying. Next thing you know, they're getting healed, they're getting delivered. You know, it was so supernatural. Yeah. The Lord showed me, it was like, you had the anointing, but you didn't have the mantle. Yeah. So look That's at this. Good. That's good. You can actually function and operate in an anointing and not have a mantle. Let's talk about the difference again. So, the, the David. So David. David was anointed what? King, right? Yeah. But was he king yet? No. Who was king? Saul. So David was anointed, but was, didn't have the mantle of king. And, and what happened to Saul, he lost the anointing and still was king. Yeah. So he can even operate with a mantle without the anointing. My God. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. God can strip you that anointing and you can still have the mantle. Yeah. Wow. wow. Elisha was anointed to be prophet, right? Of the lamb, but Elijah had the mantle. So until Elijah got, got, got taken up, Elisha was a prophet. Elijah, Elijah didn't become a prophet when he received Elijah's mantle. You know that, right? Right. He did a prophet. That's it. But he had to wait. Yeah. yeah. And wait till Elijah's time was like, okay, now it's my turn. And yes. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So let's continue. If someone who is anointed by God with no mantle holds a conference and doesn't obey and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, what do you think could happen? The Holy Spirit could actually cause things to, to disrupt. Yes. Because, because people got sick in the Bible. You know that? Yeah. People got sick in the Bible. Look, I'll, I'll give you guys an example. Aaron and Miriam, they complained and criticized to Moses, right? That's right. For his interracial marriage, only Miriam was cursed with leprosy. Why is that? It's because, because Miriam was anointed to be a prophet, but she didn't have the mantle. Yeah. Mm. There's no Moses sister mantle. However, Aaron, on the other hand, was a chief Come priest. Right. Yeah. God did not curse the mantle or office of the chief priest. Yeah. Aaron was punished later by not being allowed to enter the promised land. Remember that? Yeah. And then he had to give, he had to transfer it to Eleazar, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Another one. Moses struck the rock twice instead of speaking to it in the book of Numbers, but God still honored what he did even though he was walking in disobedience. Yeah. Why is that? Because of his mantle. Yeah. You see, people even in the world can receive a mantle by God. The President of the United States, yes. does he just come into office because, because we vote him in? No, God allows it. Yes. God allows it. Governors, God allows a mantle. Yes. King Cyrus. A mantle. Yeah. You, see how, you see what I'm saying? A mantle is, is God ordaining someone into an office. You don't have to be saved. You could be unsaved, and God will still use you for his will, That's for right. his purpose. Yeah. Yeah. That's why when you, when you have a mantle on you, you can't get puffed up. You can't think that you're the only one because it's really God giving you that mantle, and it can be stripped off you at any time and given to someone else. Yeah. Because the mantle's passed out. You're yeah. up for grabs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. God puts a specific amount of mantles on this earth people to grab. So how do you receive a mantle, right? We're talking about mantles, different, the prophetic, you know, the, the evangelist, you know, how do you receive a mantle? You have to prepare for it. Yeah. You have to bear the atmosphere of that mantle that was once on someone else who understood what they needed to have. You yeah. see, you have to have the knowledge, the revelation, you have to be, you have to have the, the maturity, the wisdom, because God's not going to mantle someone who's not ready because it can destroy them. Right. You see, you see point, so you could be anointed, you could be prophetic, right? You yep. could be prophetic, prophesying, giving dreams, visions, be on point, you know, healing, deliverance, but you're not ready for that mantle because because you're not you're not you're not mature enough. Maybe yes, you haven't yes. served under someone long enough. Right. Maybe you haven't you haven't learned about giving, that revelation of giving. Maybe you haven't repented from the fornication. Yes. Right? yes. Repented yes. from the alcohol and drugs. Yes. You see, people want, okay, I'm prophetic. I, I, I can prophesy and it comes to pass. 
but they don't want to give up the marijuana and the cocaine and the pornography. Pornography is one of the biggest ones. People want just as well, but then they want to be a prophet. Oh my God. I was telling my brother that like Jezebel comes after who? The prophets. Right. Jezebel came after Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when someone's prophetic and they're called to walk in that office, who's coming after them? That, yeah. that witch. Yeah. She's yeah. coming after them with lust. Yeah. Every, every woman around the world that didn't like it, now all of a sudden likes it. Yeah. She well. on social media. Yeah. Liking all your stuff, commenting on your stuff. Like, man, what's going on? It's because you've been anointed, yes. but yes. now you have to go through the breaking. Come on. Before you can receive that mantle that comes upon you. Yeah. When you receive that mantle, you get a, a different level of authority. Yeah. God starts drawing on people onto it at a, at a higher rate. It becomes, like, for me, example, like, as, the, as an evangelist, right? In this season of the evangelist, it's, it's, it's insane how, how powerful God is. I mean, I'm walking into stores, and the Lord's telling me, just pray for them in the back room and watch what I do. And I'm praying, and people are getting dropped by the Holy Ghost. And I'm watching like, Whoa, what? <laughs> That's crazy because it's it's the it's, it's the it's the anointing, but the also the mantle. As long as it's God's will, it's His purpose. This is what He wants to do. Yeah. The camera angle is perfect. The editing is perfect. Before we could even get one video, yeah. before we would try to edit the video, the computer was shut down. I but know. now it's smooth. Now we got more editors. Yeah. Now people are, are are willing to offer free services. I'm like, what? Is going on? It's because it's time. Yeah. We put the work in. We broke. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Let's talk about uh, you receive mantles by becoming exactly like the vessel that the mantle was on before. So you are on a journey and a process that cannot be rushed. You cannot rush God. You can be fast tracked. You could be sped up, but you cannot rush the process. That's right. You can't push through it and not pass the test that God has put in front of you. Through the process in. Mm -hmm. Through the process you get, you get tested. You get tested. God is going to allow tests to happen to see, to, to show you where your heart's at. Yeah. So if you're called to be a pastor, God's going to see, can you love your wife? Mm -hmm. Can you love your husband? Mm -hmm. If you can't love your wife and husband, how are you going to pastor his flock? Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. If you're called to be a prophet, can you stay away from the lust? Can you give up the porn? Can you stop staring too long? That's a big one. I've seen it, man. I've been, I've been to places where I see leaders. Yeah. You can't, take, you can't take your eyes off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't stop. Like, I'm like, girl, aren't you a leader? Yeah. 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 I love that. I was, I was almost going to be straight blunt. I was a whore. In the world, I had a girl, a five girls at a time rotation. Like, like all the different girls that we meet. Right. I needed a tender swipe in person. I was evangelizing for the devil for women. Building demonic churches all around the U.S. trap houses. My you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's what I was doing. It was, I was a gift, but I didn't, I didn't understand what it was supposed to be used for. My God. Yeah. So when I came to Christ, I gave, I gave up porn. I'll never forget this. Well, yeah. I was in my bed after, I, I think it was the same night I got saved, or maybe the day after. I was in my bed, and I felt the most overwhelming feeling of lust that I've ever felt in my life. And I, and I was laying in bed, and I saw two, two black shadows by my bed. I didn't know that they were incubus and succubus. Yeah. I didn't even know right. that they were, I didn't even understand that. Yeah. And I, did, I got so scared, and I said, Jesus! And I got knocked out. Went to sleep, woke up. That feeling was completely gone. A man yeah. who was addicted to porn since the age of 12 years old. Yeah. 12 years old. Yeah. All these different girls are players. I never was faithful to one woman in the world. Never. Where I'm from, I'm from a place called, you know what Broward County is? Yeah. Fort Lauderdale, near Miami. Yeah. I'm from a place where if you have a girlfriend, you're a sucker. <laughs> I was raised like that, around the dating to Haitian. If you got a girlfriend, you're a sucker, you need like five, and then, you, and then you're cool. You know what I'm saying? So my whole life, that's how, that's, how I thought, that's how I thought I was supposed to be. So you know what I'm saying? So when I came to Christ, and God said, be celibate till marriage, don't fornicate. I, I had such an encounter with him, I'm like, I don't care, whatever you say. Yeah. I used to drink Hennessy, three or four days a week, bottle. I, I was even fifth the night sometimes. Drinking popping bottles in the club. I'm on Rodeo. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm in LA. I'm in Hollywood. I'm in New York City. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in San Diego, California. I'm in the Bay. Trapping, moving weight, popping bottles, living my life like, hey! Testify. God said, give it up. I gave yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. I never drank a stick of alcohol again. This is what I say. You guys, I know the word says you can have a little drink. Ain't no problem with that. If you drink a little bit, that's on you. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. And you need to hear this. Yeah. Because you only act 
drink a little bit. Hey, I could be a Christian, come to church. I can still smoke on my dope every now and then, maybe like twice a week with my homeboys. No, you can't. Yeah. You access the spirit realm illegally. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the problem is that the youth, they don't understand why. Right. When, they're the, when they're raised in the church, when they're raised in the church, they're not explain those things. Don't smoke weed and you're going to hell. Don't smoke weed and you're going to get it. Why? Why? And my friends getting high, they, they cool and they chill and they funny. I'm gonna smoke weed too, it feels good. The girls like it, you know, when we say you smoke weed, you're accessing the spirit around the people, you're opening up the door, and the demonic spirit can enter you. Yeah. Yeah. And when that demonic spirit enters you, things start to happen like anxiety, paranoia. Yeah. You don't want that smoke, you don't want that anxiety. Yes, yeah. Oh, really? For real? Yeah, yeah. Let me give you a testimony of Pastor Joel. Let me give you a testimony of my cousin. I got testimonies on that. That's dead. right. You yes, see right. what I'm saying? That's now right. they're like, okay, I'm straight, I'm, I'm good. Now they're leading and telling their friends, I don't smoke that weed, man. You see what I'm saying? Yes. That's why we can't, we, we gotta teach the youth. That's right. We gotta teach Generation Z. We gotta explain to them why alcohol, look at this, wine and what? You go to the store, it's wine and spirits. Yes. Yes. Wine and spirits. Yes. Yes. The demons. Yes. And I'd be in front of the voodoo priest and hey, I would see them drink a bottle of rum and get possessed by a demon. Wow. Smoking a cigar, doing the whole ritual, and they had to drink rum. They couldn't do the ritual until they drank the rum and that's when the demon would enter them. And I tell the youth this, so if you want to go keep drinking alcohol, you go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. You gotta open that door, make a nice atmosphere in your temple for a demon to dwell. Woo. Have a nice day. Yeah. They're done. <laughs> That's how I evangelize. I go to the hood, I go to the gangs, I go to the witches. I walk in witch, witch, witchcraft stores. Hey, how you doing? God bless you, can I talk to you? Most of the time I won't say God bless you in the beginning. I don't want to hear my cover. <laughs> <laughs> you went to, um, you went to, who knows what Snooze is? Snooze is? Yeah. The Lord had given me a word of knowledge. He said, go to Snooze, there's going to be a woman, she's going to cry, she's going to get encountered. So I went to Snooze, he sat down, there was a woman, I tatted up, she looked like a straight witch, right? And on the video, we got it on the video, where I said, hey, this woman, you know, on the video, before she even said anything, she's been going to church, she's coming out of witchcraft, she got molested, and she got sexually abused, she needs to forgive multiple people, and the Lord showed me she's going to cry. This girl comes up to me. She goes, I've seen you before. You're on TikTok. I said, what? Where? What are you talking about? I'm on TikTok. You sure? She's like, yeah, hold up. And I'm like, OK, OK, I am on TikTok. <laughs> and she was, I was like, you down for an interview. Everything spot on, spot on, spot on, spot on. She gets encountered by the Lord. She says, why? Well, I said, what's the chance? I'm all the way from Orlando, Florida. I'm in Houston, Texas. The Lord told me to go to the schools for you. I knew it was going to be a girl because the Lord showed me. She just, because she's been asking God to confirm some things. You see what I'm saying? It's okay. So Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, the works that I do, shall, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. John 14, 12, right? So the anointing that is in Jesus is, avail is available to his followers, and his mantle is greater than any prophet in the Old Testament. Seeking these greater works may manifest in an individual life in many ways, depending on the gifts of the Holy Spirit deposited in them. So you might have the gift of healing, the gift of the prophetic, the gift for deliverance. You have to look at your gifts to know what you're called to do for that man to drop on you. You have to prepare. If you don't prepare, look, people that, how many people want to cast out demons? Be real. You want to cast out demons and you need to learn about deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. When I first came to Christ, I bought books from there to Christ. Yeah. I bought books from there to Alexander yeah. Pagani. I read them. Yeah. I learned. I would, right. I would desire that. I would desire it in prayer. Yeah. Lord, like, I'm hungry. God, I need it. I want it. Lord, thank you. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I'm going to cast out demons. I don't know how. I don't know where. I don't know who. But Lord, I want to know. I want to learn. And I'm telling you, lo and behold, we go to California to visit a friend from the military. And we're chilling in his living room. They're not saved. It's him, his girlfriend, and his girlfriend's friend. And we're watching a little music video, a Christian rap music video, right? And I'm talking about my testimony. I said, I got delivered from demons. Her friend goes, I want to get delivered too. I, want, I think I want to get delivered from demons because I've been dealing with some things. Wow. I said, well, I've never, I've never cast out a demon. I've been reading this book. <laughs> I said, well, I'm down. <laughs> I told my wife, I was like, you ready? She was like, Alright. <laughs> Go to this little pool area at the hotel. And all I have is a little pamphlet from Derek Prince in the back of the book uh, yeah. on the demons uh, to, to, to renounce yeah. and forgive. Yeah. I walk her through it. Hey, mind you, this girl, she's from Chicago. Seen, she was with, you know, like, I know Lil Durk and all, all of them. Oh, yeah. she, she was rolling with that crew and seeing her boyfriend get shot up in the face at the gas station. Wow. Like, she needed deliverance. Yeah. So, I'm praying, she's renouncing, she's forgiven. And I said, okay. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, but I couldn't even finish my sentence. I didn't know what to do. The noise came upon me. I was like, the Holy Ghost. I said, come back. Come back. And my yeah. wife's like, in Jesus' name, come back. Project out going up everywhere. My friend, who's from Patterson, New Jersey, he's from the hood. I was in the military where he's sitting there crying. <laughs> His girlfriend's eyes are like, I'm casting it. And bro, what happens because of that one public deliverance that they saw? My homeboy, I'm, I'm going to give my life to Christ, bro. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to give too. His girl, same thing. Not only them, he goes and calls his friend. I didn't even know this. He was like, bro, I'm going to be baptized tomorrow. I'm like, I bet we're going to go to the pool. Do the same thing. His friends come to watch. His friend comes up to me and says, hey, bro, I heard about what happened yesterday. Look, I got taken out of my body for the night. I was thinking, this guy was raised in the church. Wow. Parents are ministers. Wow. We're fully raised in the church. Came with his girlfriend. Look, bro, I, I, I think I, 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 I got taken out of my body and I see this woman, this demon, Jezebel. And, and that spirit told me if I gave up my mother, that, they would, that she would give me riches and money. And I, see wow. what I, said, I said, okay, what you do? I said, no. And I, I went back in my body and, my, and the Holy Ghost said, he was not. He said, yes. But I didn't say nothing. I said, okay. And he said, but I, I heard about what happened to Mark um, to, 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 to all of them yesterday. And I, I just want to, I, I be praying. I said, okay, bro. Let's go into the little list. Part the list. Forgive, let go, renounce, all that stuff. Yeah. In the name of, he's projected out vomiting. Like, there's a whole bunch of people, like family, this is a Marriott, a whole bunch of family people is midday that are in the pool watching this. <laughs> this guy's projected out vomiting. In the name of Jesus, come out. I'm talking about yakking, like coming out. Like, it's bad. Like, what is going on? Getting delivered, black up. <laughs> Weird. I felt this power. I was like, I love this. Come on. Yeah. And he gets baptized, gets filled with the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, all that, right? Praise but God. it all came from what? The one leap of faith to pray, to pray for that one girl. Yes. So some of you probably never prayed for deliverance, never, don't know how it's going to happen. If you seek God, and you yeah. ask him, yeah. and you yeah. learn about it, and you prepare. Yeah. There's a moment, there's a, there's a perfect Kairos yeah. moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where, you're gonna, where it's going to happen. Yeah. Let me tell you something. My friend who I've been praying for for the last year, two, two, three years, mm -hmm. had all my prayers, my childhood friend I was raised with. Right now, coming to this conference, on the way downstairs, I, I look to my left, his wife, hey, what? And he comes out of nowhere, bro, wow. what? And they're coming. They're, they're coming to see us tomorrow because they want to they receive Christ. Catholics, right? I say that because I, this prayer is, is important. Yeah. It's the only thing you can send to the future that will wait for you. Yeah. You have to pray. Yeah. So some of you are like, I want to cast out people. I want to prophesy, right? What do you mean? The prophet prophetic is needed. But if you don't know your word and you want to prophesy, you can get deceived by the devil. That's right. You start thinking you're prophesying by the Spirit of God, it's a spirit of divination. That's that's right. Right. The word of God is what funnels out the prophet. Like it funnels the prophecy yes. to make you nice and clean. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So you can't sit there and say, I'm going to go, go prophesy and do whatever I want, but you don't read your word. That's yeah. right. How many people read their word daily? And I'm not talking about a devotion. I'm talking about strategic Bible reading life. I'm talking about I'm going to read a chapter a day, minimum. I'm going to pray. This is not religion. That's good. Right. Yes. Y'all got a nine to five? Mm -hmm. You go there religiously. Yeah, for eight yeah. hours a day. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. Leave late because you want money. Mm -hmm. You put in money before God. Yeah. You don't want to get up early at five in the morning. Yeah. You don't want to go to sleep late. Do you believe your prayers can be answered? Yeah. yeah. You see, the problem is you pray for a week and you think it's going to happen. It doesn't happen and you give up. Right. Are you willing to keep pressing in? Yes. During the entire process of wanting to cast out demons and, and, and move in power, I'm telling you, that, that, it came, it came. The analytical thoughts, like, right? The analytical, like, oh, no. But I would fight and pray. Yes. And then cast out the miracles and no. In the name of, I'm going to cast out. The Bible says it. I was delivered. Yes. And I'm going to being delivered. That was emotional. No, it wasn't. Because I stopped the alcohol. I stopped the porn. Yeah. I got healed from a disease that got me healed for nine years. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. I got tested. Yeah. Are y'all willing to go through the testing? Yeah. Are y'all willing to sit there 
and, yes. tr- and, and literally endure and yes. pray and read the word read and, and seeking him. Seek his kingdom and all his righteousness, right? Yes. And things will begin to be added on to you. Yes. I'm telling you, that's the key. You want the key is relationship. Yes. You want to know how to have boldness? I love Jesus Christ a lot. Yes. Yeah. A lot. Yes. I didn't just, let me tell you something. I didn't just love him out of nowhere. I love him a lot. I began to learn how to love him. Yes. I would ask him. The Bible says, well, I was real with God when I first came to when I first came to Christ, the Bible says to love you with all, all my mind, heart, soul, and strength. Mm-hmm. And love others and myself. I said, God, I'm in the, I was in the grocery store. I'm looking around. I see all these people. I said, I can't love them as myself. Wow. Man, look at that. Like, no, like, I'm supposed to love them like I love myself? Yeah. And I'm like, God, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I love my mother and my father more than you. I was real. Yeah. And I went to God and said, God, break it off me. Yes. I want to love you with all my mind, my heart, my soul, yes. and my strength. I want to love others as myself. Put me through whatever it out and cry. God, I don't want to feel this. Do it to me. Yeah, yeah. Whatever has to happen. Yeah. You have to be real with God. Yeah. You can't pray like a Pharisee. Yeah. Oh, God. I, not pray. It's, your, it's, your, it's your friend, it's your homeboy, it's your, it's your best friend. Yeah. And I'm talking to my dog, Joel. I'm not going to sit there and be like, Joel, we're going to go to the store today. Are you ready? I'm gonna be like, what's up, bro? How you doing? How's your wife doing? Everything good? You want to go to the store, my brother? Let's go, man. You ready? All right, for sure. Right? Because you're my friend. Yes. God wants you to speak to him like a friend. Yeah. Yes. He doesn't want you to come with religion. Yeah. You come to him in prayer as a friend. You commune with the Holy Ghost. You yes. eat with the Spirit of God in the secret place. Yes. That's when you begin to break. That's when his presence increases in your, in yes. your life. That's when you begin to feel his tangible presence regularly. Yes. Anywhere you go. Mm-hmm. Anywhere, like the Apostle said yesterday. He said, obedience is, is key. Yeah, yeah. If you want if you want to be a glory carrier, yes. anywhere you go, you can, look, I go to which 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 craft shops, I go to I go, I go interview psychics, right? Y'all see the videos. I've been doing that before videos. Mm-hmm. But how did I do it? Relationship with God. Yeah. yeah. I would be in the secret place for two hours before I go. Yeah. I would ask the Lord, which one do you want me to go to? Yeah. When we would get into the parking lot, I would pray for 30 minutes again. Yeah. I would bring out the oil. We would anoint each other. And then in the where in the atmosphere of Jesus Christ of heaven, yes. we're walking into a whole yes. witchcraft world. You know what's happening in the spirit realm? Demons are running. Yeah. Yeah. They're hiding. Yeah. And we've already bound binding the demons in the in the spot yeah. 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 You see, it's all revelation through the word of God. Yes. I'm gonna tell you something. God is doing a big deliverance movement right now. Yeah. He showed me this. I was concentrating yeah. in the mountains yeah. a few a few months ago. And the Lord showed me because because I was like, God, it's all about deliverance. Why are there so many deliverance movements right now? Like, is that bad, God? Like, like because the Bible says, like, like, we're not supposed to rejoice because a demon submits your name because our, our names are written in the book of life. They're, they're wrong. And God said, son, you see how much witchcraft is going on? Yeah. You see all the witches and warlocks taking my, 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 my people? Yep. Yeah. The, 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 the TikTok, the witch talk, the, the, yeah. the people, people out there doing all types of LGBTQ, you could, uh, a five-year-old can say he's a, he's a girl, he's, a, he's, he's really a boy, and the parents are getting arrested. All this, all this, they're, they're, they're calling pedophiles minor attractive persons now. Oh he, said, oh he said, son, you see that? My, I'm going to flex my muscles, That's and I'm going right. to let people know that I'm proud. Right. And I'm going to use my people. You do not have to be, I'm going to say this, you do not have to be an ordained evangelist to cast out that word. That's right. What right. right. does the Bible say? These signs shall follow those who believe. Yeah. Yeah. What will you do? Who knows? You'll cast out devils. Lay hands on the sick. They'll be healed. They'll recover. Yeah. You'll speak in new tongues. Take up poison. No harm. That is the inheritance we receive as believers. So why don't we believe it? Come on. Paul told Timothy, do the works of an evangelist. That's right. Yeah. Timothy was a pastor. Yeah. Philip. Look at the advantage. What did he do? He would go into a city and miracle signs and wonders, casting out devils. The Bible says they would cry out with loud voices. Yeah. 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 And were all these people who were under witchcraft by Simon the sorcerer, what would they do? Yeah. What, what, what did they do in the Bible? Oh my gosh, he's more powerful than him. That's right. Who is your God? Yeah. I believe. Right. Yeah. Simon the sorcerer, a whole warlock. Yeah. Yeah. I'm giving my life to Christ too. Yeah. Got baptized. He wanted, he wanted to buy the gospel. Oh, yeah. right. My brothers and my sisters, we don't gotta buy nothing. That's yeah. right. And don't, it's free 99. Yeah. And the inheritance that we receive. Yeah. Jesus Christ wants us to do greater works than him. Hey. Why are we not seeing it in the body of Christ? Yes. Why? Yes. Why? Yes. Why does it become the same, the same pattern of tradition? Right. The same. Let's worship, hear the word, 
Oh, to come, go home, okay. Wow. Yeah. Come on, sir. Is that your only is that the only time you see God? Come on. Yeah. When you leave the church, yeah. are you making evangelism a lifestyle? Right. Yeah. Everywhere I go is an opportunity. Yeah. Off camera too. Yeah. Listen to me. Off camera. Yeah. Off camera, I'm still preaching the gospel. That's yeah. yeah. right. Another one. Do we know what the gospel is? Yeah. Who? That's the question. You know how many people I, I, I witness to in public who say, I'm a Christian, I've been raised in the church, my mother, like my mother, father, all this stuff. And I ask them, what's the gospel? Oh, it means that, you know, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Okay, so a man died on the cross for your sins. Can I go right now and go on the cross and die for your sins? Oh, I ain't gonna lie. You're right, bro. Like, they don't even know. And there's people in this room right now. The Lord showed me this in prayer. Yeah. There's people in this room right now that don't know the gospel. Yeah. They don't yeah. know why it's good news. Yeah. They don't know what they're saved. They don't even know why blood saves them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're teaching warlocks no more about this than we do. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why? Wow. Because we're not a word. We're not seeking God. I don't, you know, you know what Muslims do? They follow their imam. They follow their leader. Yes. They don't even read the Quran. Catholics. Yes. They don't even care. They just trust in their priests. Mm -hmm. Why are we not being like the Bereans in the Book of Acts and searching the scripture ourselves? Yes. Yes. If the only time you experience God is through another man of God, you're getting watered down Christianity. Oh. Yes. Faith. Mm -hmm. You can depart from the faith. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to say it. People might not like it. I'm going to say it. I can feel the atmosphere. Look, you can never lose your salvation, but you can forfeit it. That's right. I'm going to say it. I don't care. Yes. The Bible is very clear that you can depart from the faith. That's right. You can't tell me people getting saved, right. going to yes. the club, dancing with strippers, doing lines of cocaine, cheating on their wife and husband, they're going to make it to heaven. Fornicators are not here the kingdom of heaven. Adulterers, drunkards, idolaters. So you're telling me these people will make it to heaven. He's a holy and righteous God. Workers of iniquity will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is convict you. Sin and iniquity is different. Sin is strong and short. You give back up. You Thank you, Lord. Your blood washes me. I'm going to keep it When you're a worker of sin, when you make your practice like you're playing the ball, you will not inherit the kingdom. Him, you never, you never actually took time out your day to seek Him, but you thought going to church, having church attendance, would save your life. Come on! But I go with the church every Sunday. I showed up in my best outfit. Come on! Ah, hallelujah! And I'm at home, sleeping with every girl in the world. Come on! And you gonna make it to the right? God ain't worried about that. Many will, people will, will say, "I love Jesus," but the heart's far from Him. That's right. That's right. That's far right. from Him. Yes. We have to repent. Yes. What the apostle preached on last night about sobriety. Really resonated with my spirit. Yeah. It really, it, it really encouraged me to know that there's other men and women of God out here that really understand what God's doing in God's life. He's cleaning up his body. Yeah. He's cleaning up his body. That's why the living is so important. Yeah. Because people are bound by demons. Yes, sir. You want some of you here might be saying, okay, look, uh, porn, right? I'm trying to get the porn. I'm trying. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to give this porn, I'm repenting, and you're convicted, but you need deliverance. Right. You need someone, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person, an elder, you need someone that has more faith in you, to lay hands on you and cast that devil out, and then you'll see a shift. There's people in here right now that they need deliverance. They need healing. Some of you need healing because you need to repent of certain sin. Some of you can't be healed because of unforgiveness. Come on, come on. The Bible's clear, clear about that. Sin is what brings sickness. Yes. Some of you have repented, have confessed, and are living a holy lifestyle, but God wants to take you through a process of faith. He's already healed you by the stripes. Yes. And yes. it manifests in the physical at his time like the apostle preached on. Right. Yes. You have to be able to have faith to wait. Look, I got healed from a miraculous, miraculous healing of a disease that the doctors couldn't heal. Nine years I had it. I come to Christ, one three-day fast, he heals me. Come on. Right? But that's, that's a miracle healing. Yes. There's also a process which is called healing. Yes. Miracles are instant. Healing takes time sometimes. Yes. Yes. You have to be willing to endure. God wants to teach you things yes. through this process. Because yes. he puts sickness on you, no. That's right. But he cannot. He will allow it yeah. for his purpose, for his will to be done. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to sit there and pray every day and declare and decree the word of God? Because yes. it's the word of God that never returns void to him. Yes. That's the word of God that's going to move. Yes. You see, all these things are necessary for evangelism. It's, it's, it's the, work, the works of an evangelist come through intimacy with God. Look, evangelists are supposed to do what? They're supposed to be frontliners. Yeah. In the field, yeah. casting out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead, saying, everyone, fish of the man, come on. Come, come to the pastor. Come on. Come to the apostle. Come to the church. Come to the church. That's what an evangelist does. Yeah. So how are we going to do it when we don't even have a relationship with God? Yeah. Come on. That's the first step. You don't have to repent tonight. I'm 33 yes. years old. Some of you are younger here. Teenagers in your 20s. Look. My little brother got saved at 15, my stepbrother. I'm fire for God. He's 18 years old right now. Yeah. And he's anointed. Yeah. He, my cameraman, my cameraman, Kevin, my brother-in-law, he will lay in and people get healed and deliver like this. Oh like God. this. He's just, he's just supporting the vision. Yeah. That he's going to receive a double portion soon. Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying yeah. is, for you, don't think because you are 16, 18, 22, right. I, whatever, whatever age you are, you can't go out there and move in power. Yes, you That's can. Right. That's yes, right. you can. Yes. But it comes to intimacy with God. Yes. You have to seek him. That is the key to boldness. Yes. I get that all the time. People come to the church from all over the world. In, in the central Florida, from all these different countries and states, every service, half the people in there are not even from Orlando, wow. flying in. And every, they come to, I need boldness like you. 
You need boldness? I'm going to pray that you break. Yeah. I'm going to pray that God will break you and that you'll, you'll get closer to him. You need to pray. Because you want to you be used by God for the wrong reason. Yeah. I'm telling you, I had nobody lay hands on me for boldness. Yeah. My boldness came through my relationship yeah. with Jesus Christ. Yes. I had an encounter with Jesus. He changed my life. And I felt the peace I never felt in my life. Depression left. Murder left. Anger left. Rage left. Um, suicide left. Diseases left. Everything left. Then God gave me a wife that I don't deserve. After being who I was in the world. Gave me three beautiful children. Like, now I'm pastoring a flock. Well, I don't deserve this. Yeah. That, that, that right there. That right there shows me, God, you are in my life. That's confirmed that you are with me. So I'm going to go tell everybody about you. Yeah. I don't care who it is. You come with me good. They know this. You come with us to the streets. Anywhere we go, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to preach the gospel. Come on. You come to our church and you want to come evangelize on a, on a, on a, on a Monday or Thursday night. You know what we're going to do? First thing, let's go, let, let's go to Walmart. Go in front of the registers right there in front of everybody and go tell me testimony. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's how I know if someone really has a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. You really love God. Yeah. You gotta you gotta leap out in faith and say, okay, yeah. look, this is what happened, right? Right? <laughs> God did this, God did that. And, and the first time you do it, it sucks. I'm telling you, you get, you're nervous. You're like, but then when you break free, yeah. you got that anointing, that anointing yeah. coming from you just you just get fired up in the Holy Ghost. Yes. You don't want to stop. Yeah. Now you're going to everybody in the long line. That's when people start getting healed and delivered like that yeah. in the streets. The, the world needs to know that the body of Christ is not weak. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's what that's what drew me to witchcraft. Wow. I want I was like, I wanted there's something spiritual in the world. I took that as deep. I I I have taken psychedelics, I've seen the spirit realm. I I I knew things were real. I just want I knew there were spiritual things I wanted to know. I had sleep paralysis in the world. I've been, I've, been, I've had encounters with demons in the world. So I knew that there was entities, but I was just like, what is it? Yeah. Never thought it was Jesus Christ. Wow. Because I was raised Catholic. Never. My, my, my whole perspective on Jesus was that, that, that the priests rape children and they just want money. It's, it's boring. Yeah. I would fall asleep in the pews of the Catholic Church. I would go there on Sundays after being in Miami all night till 6 in the morning just to please my mother so she wouldn't annoy me. I, I had a Puerto Rican mother. And she's very, very, very big on Catholic, the Catholic Church. By the way, she just, like I said, she just got sick. She just, she, she swore to me she would never get baptized again. She's like, I got baptized as a baby. I, got, I don't need to get baptized. And I said, Mom, you When I stepped away and started praying for her, she came to the church a few months ago, got baptized, wow. got prayed for her, all that. <laughs> but it was by my light, though. Yeah. It, was my, it, was my, it was my good fruit. Yeah, because yeah. in the beginning, I tried to force it because I was so zealous. Yeah. So it's the same thing when we're in public witnessing the people. Look, I'm going to say something. You don't go quoting scriptures to people. Right. You don't say, the book of John says, the yeah. book of this says, yeah. right. they don't care. They don't know how, yeah. they don't care about how much you know until they know about how much you care. They don't yeah. care. Yeah. So you have to be able to adapt. What did Paul do? He was all things to all men. That's right. Right. Yeah. That's right. Y'all know I went to a, a week ago, I went to a Muslim mosque in a Muslim outfit to go preach the gospel to an imam. Wow. On their prayer carpet. Hey, I don't see a different from the outfit. But how, how, would, how, did, why, how did God allow that? How did that happen? It's <laughs> I didn't go on their life. Repent! Like, no. I, what's up? How you doing, sir? Oh, yeah. I'm here. I'm just in. What are you, what are you, what are you, what's, your, what's your agenda here? Oh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a pastor. I just, I just want to speak to you. I just want to have a conversation. Oh, no argument, sir. No argument. I just want to, you know, just showing them love. Okay, come on. Can I, can I record the video? Uh, look, it's just, it's just, you know, just to spread light. It's just a normal dialogue. No argument. Okay. You see the grace? Yeah. When you have love? Yeah. And it led to a powerful encounter where we're gonna be able, to be honest, to expose how Islam is false. Yeah. Look, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. I'm gonna say this. I don't know if there's people in here that think that oh maybe there's another way to make it. No, it's only through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, is he is God. Yeah. He is the fullness of God bodily. Yeah. He is the man God. Jesus Christ, God wrapped in flesh, yeah. incarnate. Right. Jesus Christ is God. That's a revelation. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's young people in here like, oh, oh. Jesus God, He's the Son of God. Because guess what? This physical realm. We cannot access this physical realm unless we're in a what? A body. Yeah, right. That's a spiritual law. Yeah. 
Yes. You know, because there's no, you can't, you can't, you can't go around it. No. Mm -hmm. So, God, an all powerful spirit, all knowing, how is he able to access this physical realm? Yeah. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Birth right. into this world. Right. Yeah. Son. So, God came in a body to be perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Because we're not perfect. That's yeah. right. And one sin equals what? Yeah. The wage of sin is what? Yeah. Yeah. Death. So he knew he had, there had to be a human sacrifice, a perfect human, untainted blood. He had to come and be in a, in a fleshly body, go through everything we went through. My brother in the back, and the red, he went through everything he went through. Yeah. Anger, yeah. never sinned though. Mm -hmm. He got angry, but he never sinned. That's right. Right. My sister yeah. in the back, temptation of lust, but never, 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 never lusted. Yeah. Yeah. He was in a body. Yeah. He had to sleep, he had to eat. Yeah. He had to study in the temples. Yeah. He went through all that but never sin, so that we can be forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ yeah. literally lived a perfect life, born of a virgin, lived a perfect life. At 30 years old, what happened? Got baptized in the Jordan River, right? Yes. The anointing came upon him, right? Yes. To start what? His ministry. Yes. Did Jesus go around and say, hey, let, hey, let's just love everybody, okay? Nope. Let's just love them all. He came and he said to the Pharisees, like, your mom and daddy is snake. <laughs> yeah. 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 He didn't play with the religious folk, dressing up all night so they expect that uh, for the, that their heart was far from the Father. He said, Look at you, you a hypocrite. Yeah. Yeah. Giving them riddles they couldn't understand. Going to the going to the broken people. Look. He said the drunkards, he says the prostitutes. What would happen? They would change. Yeah. Yeah. And then he would say, Come on, watch this. They go to the synagogue. So all the people that are supposed to be saved, all right? Yeah. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're healed. Get up. Moving in power. Yes. What would you do if you saw that? You're going to believe. Yes. You got famous. You're going to yes. stature. You're going to wisdom and stature. He was famous. Multitudes followed him. He yes. proved he operated in the supernatural. That means something out of this natural realm. We're so used to this natural stuff. You see me as a human. You see the natural repeated cycles. But if yes. someone comes and disrupts the natural, the natural stuff that we're used to is called yes. supernatural. Right. How did this person get healed? A lady came to our church. She had 18 different diseases since she was young. She came to the, to the front. I, I told her, I said, there's an altar in your bloodline through adultery from, I, I, forgot, I forgot the specifics. I, I was in the spirit. Right. I just was listening to the Holy Ghost, repeating it. Right. Broke the altar. She got completely healed. Wow. Completely. Wow. So what happens when, when a whole a whole bunch of people see that. They're going to believe. That's yeah. right. So that's what Jesus did. Yeah. Yeah. He proved it. Look, the kingdom of heaven is here now. Yeah. It's here now. It's at hand. Yeah. Look, come out. Yeah, be healed. Yeah. Everything's moving. Power, power, yes. And teaching them and discipling them. He knew people were betraying him. He knew people were just like him because he was famous. But their hearts were far from him. Right? Yeah. He did not commit on a certain man. Why? Because their hearts was far from him. Yes. They were, Jesus of Nazareth, you're the Messiah. He'd be like, yeah, yeah, I got to go. Because they were, they were captain, they were faith. Mm -hmm. And he kept doing his assignment, completing his mission. And what happened? He fulfilled all the messianic prophecies about him, the Old yeah. Testament. That's right. And he was whipped, he was lashed, he was scourged, he was brutally beaten, crown of thorns on his head, suffered the most, tor the most gruesome physical torture that anyone can go through. And then also, spiritually, took all our sins on his back. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. Think about taking all sin and sickness on his back. Sickness too. My he God. bore it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Sickness, sin, everything on his back. Everything. He took it all. And he went up on the cross. And he said, it's finished. Disarmed every principality and power. At that point, every demon lost. Yeah. 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 And then what happened? You know, all the people that were walking with him, they, they doubted. They didn't believe some of them. Yeah. At all, most of them. They left them. John was only, John supported them because he was a good friend. But I believe even John doubted. I believe even John doubted. The same one that walked on water, that turned water into wine, cast out demons, just died. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm thinking, man? All right. I guess it was false. Let's just go hide now. Mm -hmm. let's, just, let's, let's go away. Day one, day two, day three goes by. What happens? He rose from the dead. Jesus prayed for Lazarus to rise from the dead. Did anyone pray for Jesus? Nope. <laughs> Come on. Yes, Lazarus rose from the dead on the fourth day, but Jesus Christ had to pray for him. Mm. Who prayed for Jesus to rise from the dead? Nobody. Right. He rose from the dead, showed himself onto his disciples. For 40 days walked the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Telling them about the things that were to come. Telling them about discipling them. Yeah. 
And then, in fact, like, like the apostle mentioned yesterday, he rose up. Yeah. He just rose up. Right. Past the clouds. At that point, you don't believe. Yeah. Yeah. But let me tell you something. When he first rose from the dead, he said, well, what, receive you the Holy Ghost, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And he breathed on him. But then he told them, but go wait. Yeah. Go tarry in Jerusalem and wait. So he had a power from high. Why? If they already received the Holy Ghost, why is he telling them to go wait? Yeah. Because there was a baptism coming. There was an endurance that he witnesses. Look, if you want to go evangelizing, you're not baptizing the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. You need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost tonight. Yes. Or today, this afternoon. Let me ask that question. First, I just feel that the Lord wants to ask, wants me to ask, is anyone in here that cannot forgive, raise your hand. If you're dealing with unforgiveness, you can be real. Okay. I'm gonna, I want y'all to come, come up. Okay, come up right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. Seriously, if you, there's more people. If you cannot forgive, you will not, he will not forgive you. Why would you, why would, why would you, why would you deal with that? So, if you can't forgive and you're on that side, come on. I'm going to pray for you. You're going to forgive tonight. I'm going to count. Amen. Come on, my brother. Amen. So listen, so I can't cast a demon to unforgiveness out of you. You understand? It's called free will. You have to make a free will decision to forgive. Right? Was, anyone, was anybody up here sexually abused? You're sexually abused. Okay. That's a big one. That's not, that's not, that's not normal. You know that. Let me tell you something. Sometimes people say, why? Right? Sin, right? Sin is like, it's sin, generational curses. There's so much going on in the spirit realm. Things happen. But God knew, because the Bible says he knew us before what? We are formed in our mother's womb. How? Because we come from him. He's an he's a all-powerful spirit. We come from him. Because we're spirit beings. And we're sent here. We, get, we receive a soul, a body. We're triune vessels, right? He knew that you'd be able to endure it. He didn't want it to happen. So he sent you to be a forward on your bloodline. To cleanse the bloodline. To break all that. So he knew that you were strong enough. He knew that he was going to draw you in. He knew that. So it's important to just understand that God is sovereign. He's all-knowing. We don't know even a fraction of what's going on for real. That's why we rely on him completely. So when you just let go and understand that unforgiveness is for all of you, Unforgiveness does nothing. If any of you right now could tell me the benefit of unforgiveness, I'll leave right now and never be a pastor again. There's no benefit. There's no benefit. What does it do? I have people backstab me. Look, let me tell you something. My cousin right there, he can tell you. I love him to death. In the world, we, we sold drugs together. He owed me money. What did I do when he came to Christ? I, I said, bro, keep it. And it wasn't no $10. Let me tell you that. And I had not told him today because he was convicted. He's still, he's still convicted. I said, bro, I, don't care. I, I love you. I, for, I forgive you. I don't care. Amen. I don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if I could forgive, and, and let me tell you something, that was nothing compared to the backstabbing I really received from people. Family turning on me, friends turning on me. Yeah. I'm talking about deep stuff. People I love the most, actually, turned on me because, because of just the, the enemy. I was, I was a worker for the devil. It was coming from me. Y'all need to forgive. Let go, for real. Like, literally understand about that revelation that you have hurt other people, right? So, if you hurt other people, and other people hurt you, there's no benefit from either side. The only benefit is love. And love forgives. Love says, it's okay. Love says, I bless you. We're only here on earth for a short, a short amount of time. Short. If you live to 80 years, it's a long time, right? And still, the older people in here right now, they can tell you how fast their life went. Yes. You don't, there's no, there's no time to be wasted. There's, we have, we have an assignment. There's souls that need to be saved. There's souls that need to be saved that have, that literally will relate to your testimony. But you can't testify if you don't have a testimony. Yeah. If you're still bound to that sin. Yes, that's good. You have a testimony. How old are you? 23. 23. You still have it. You, I don't care if you're 23 years old. You can still go in the industries. Generation Z needs people like you. Yes. And you can tell you something. God changes our character. 
but we still have the same personality. Yeah. You know what that means? Yes. You don't have to change your personality and be somebody you're not. Right. Your character changes yeah. because there's a specific group of people that are assigned to your name. Yes. I come, I preach anywhere the same way. I don't change my preaching for nothing because this is this is what God has called me to do. Yes. And you see how most of the young people, all y'all young, right? This is, this is what God has called me to the youth. Yes. Yes. The, the nations, but the youth. Because God is doing a, a big, a big a, this guy, he makes music. I knew, I knew him from the internet. Powerful, powerful wow. Christian rapper. Wow. And I'm telling you, anointed. And he, God cannot shoot you to where you need to go in your car and until you forgive. You will always be blocked. No matter how much music you put out, no matter who you do a feature with, you will always be like this. Until you break out of that and then the mantle comes upon you. The mantle conquers, right? Yep. Then the mantle comes upon you. And that's when everything is supernatural. Don't you want that? Yes. Don't you want that for your wife too? You gotta forgive. This is the people that hurt you. That got you into this situation. Let me tell you something. The people that hurt you, that got, got you into that situation, you have to let go. And you have to forgive. Because by you letting go, it frees you. I'm telling you. They, okay. How many people have you hurt in your lifetime? You don't even know. Do you even remember what you did? For the most part. You see what I'm saying? As humans, we're selfish. All of us. We're, we all have a like, selfishness in us. We hurt people, but we don't care because it's me, though. I don't care. They'll get over it. But so who's the one that's really in the middle? The enemy. He want, the enemy wants us to hold on to unforgiveness. To let it, to let it. He's the one that torments us. That wants us to, 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 don't, to dwell on it. You take those thoughts captive, you cast them down. You say, no. Everything that goes against the knowledge of God, that, that you learn in your word, love, you say, you're not the same God. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, get, get behind me. You see what I'm saying? Because you're going to fight. You're gonna, you're gonna, the enemy's going to continue to try to come at your mind. That's what a battlefield is. But God is going to strengthen your mind through this process. And you're going to come back stronger than ever before. Romans 8, 28. Yes. All things work for the good of those who love God, that are called according to what? His purpose. You're called according to God's purpose. Do you love God? Who am I? Everything is going to work for the good. Amen. I don't even understand how he does it. When I first came to Christ, I used to try to figure it out and calculate it. And he would dumbfound my wisdom every time. Every time. I'd be like, I'm, I'm done. I'm done even thinking. Like, what does the Bible say? My thoughts are not. So where do we find his thoughts? Word in prayer. So if we engulf our mind with his thoughts, we become like, more like him. And that's when we move in his power. So I want y'all to forgive. You have a calling too, bro. Don't you want to be used by God? You go to a church. You go to the rock. Powerful church. Holy Spirit. I felt the glory when I first even out there. I thought, oh, oh my goodness gracious. The power God's here. It's a powerful church. God still wants you to, to use you in the field too. You can win souls and bring them to the church to get disciples. Don't you want to do that? Bro, I'm telling you. God will break you out of fear. He'll break you out of nervousness. He'll give you a boldness. Yes. What do you still have to do in the world? Playing ball. Playing ball. Just like me. And a few of them over there too. You know what we do? We go to the basketball courts and win souls. You know, I go to, I go to the like we go to the most clear parks in Orlando. And I tell them, hey. I'll give you $100 and you can beat us, beat us in a 5 on 5. And the Holy Ghost take over, sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time, we gotta run it back. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, bro, like, you can, you can use what God has gifted you with to, to literally do His work, bro. Like, you can glorify Him through anything. Yes. You don't have to be on a microphone. You don't have to be an ordained pastor, an apostle. That stuff is great. Maybe God has that for you in the future. You know mantle switch to? That's good. Remember that. It's never the same answer all the time. Right now, I'm doing the works of an evangelist, but what did, what did the man of God prophesy over me twice yesterday? The apostle. Yeah. I've had prophets, well known prophets, prophesy the same thing. I know I'm walking into that season soon yeah. to build churches. You see what I'm saying? So, mantles can switch too. So, you have to be willing to forgive so you can bro, forgive, forgive and just let it go. But I'm not going to sit here and say forget. I'm not going to say that. Forgive and forget, it's, it's impossible. I still remember all the times I was betrayed, but now I have peace. Yeah. 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 Okay? So who
life where we could, yeah, we say something. You know why we have a Heavenly Father? Because He knew there'd be a lot of orphans. But I want to say something. Our Heavenly Father is not like your biological father, or even mine, or anybody else in here. But sometimes we, because we didn't have a father that raised us, or because He didn't raise us right, we think that our Heavenly Father is the same way. His personality is not the same. Hallelujah. He loves you and he created you. I'm not cap I'm not just saying this to be a preacher man in front of, like for the camera, I could care less about the camera. I'm saying this because it's true. He created you. And his image and likeness. You literally are you, you are made perfect by God. He's gonna he's gonna use you, but you have to forgive and let go of the, the, the pain through your, your, your biological father. Yeah. You have to pray for him. Yeah. With love. I promise you, he, my, my, I couldn't forget my biological father. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't forget a lot of people. When I forget my biological father, and I started praying for him, I had to forgive my biological brother, father, I mean, what you name it, everybody down the line. When I forgave and started praying for them with love, he saved them all. He reconciled us back. Do you want that? Do you want true reconciliation and love with your father? You don't think I can do it? You know you can do it. You know how sometimes people say, I can do it. Yes, he can. He really can. Yeah. If he can have my cousin sitting, sitting right there at a conference where I'm preaching and we're former drug dealers, we're the worst of the worst. I don't even, I don't even deserve a mic. Thank you, Father. You ever seen that on social media? Okay. <laughs> I tattooed all over my body. Right? Thug, look like a thug. But if God can use me, he can use you. If God can save my family, he can save you. Save your family. Have you been there after Christ? Yeah. Fully for real. When did you get baptized? How old were you? Ten. ten. And when you were ten years old, did you really know the gospel? Yeah. So did you really give your life to Christ or did you just take a bath? <laughs> the Bible says there's one baptism. And that's when you truly surrender. People don't like this, man, because it breaks religion. Right. Going before a, a, a crowd of people to get to go on water this doesn't doesn't please nobody. Doesn't please no. I mean, it, it, it's, it's not good. It, it's not. It's just a bath. The angels in heaven rejoice when when one sinner comes to repentance. Yeah. Repentance is the mind. So your mind has to turn away from the worldly ways and turn to Christ. And you have to literally be like, Jesus Christ is it. And I'm about to surrender to him and give him everything. When you do that, the Holy Spirit will fill you. And that's when you'll have power to literally tread on scorpions and snakes. And to win souls and to prophesy. You get a prophetic, get a prophetic calling on your life. You're, you're what a lot of end times you know, youth are going to be doing. Prophetic evangelists. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. 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 You want to be prophetically evangelizing. You see how I move on, on social media, the prophetic like that. I'm not. I'm just. I'm gonna be 100%. I am not a prophet. I'm not walking in that office, but I'm prophetic because the Lord uses it in the field because He wants to win souls. Absolutely. Don't you want to do that? Yes. Don't you want to lay hands and people get healed? It's gonna take forgiveness and it's gonna take really, really giving your life to Christ. Yeah. Do you really want to surrender tonight? Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. All right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's do this. I'll leave the time. Be honest, can anyone still not forgive? Be real. You still can't forgive. What happened to you? My dad. What happened? Um, just how he treated my mom. He hit your mom? Um, or like verbally abused? Verbally abused, narcissism. That's how my dad was, too. So, did your dad have a dad? Yeah. And was his dad the same way? He was kind of absent. He didn't know until later. Same thing with my dad. My dad's dad. My grandfather left when he was five years old. That causes things to happen. So the root is deeper than you know. It's generational. You know what the enemy wants to do? Cycle to you. Blind you. Have you to marry the wrong man. And the same thing happens. It's deeper. It's not It's not your biological father's dish. You have, you have one in one. It's the kingdom of Satan. You see what I'm saying? It's the kingdom of Satan. That's our enemy. We don't wrestle against what? But against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual witness, demonic, demonic spirits. We literally wrestle 
Like, you know what a wrestling match is? When you back up, you know you get that feeling of depression, that feeling of anger? That's a wrestling match. You fight with the word of God. You fight with truth. You fight with prayer. So you need to fight right now with love for your father. Hallelujah. And you need to let it go because it's not worth it. Why would you let that bound, bind, bound? So what you're saying is the enemy won when you can't forgive. That's what you're saying. You're saying your feelings mean more than the word of God. It's keeping it real. Can you forgive for real, for real? Your life's going to change by your obedience, and God knows how much it hurts. He's going to take that pain, and he's going to replace it with joy and peace and love. I promise you. It happened to, if it could happen to me, it could happen to anybody. But I don't deserve it. Five minutes left. Okay. So y'all ready? Y'all forgive? Come over here, y'all. Come over here. Yeah, it's, a, it's a simple prayer. I want y'all to say this. Say, please don't just say it to say it. Okay? Mean it. If you mean it, you don't mean it. Who can't you forgive, bro? For what? You remember that thing. Same thing. Are you willing to let it go so the cycle doesn't happen to you? Because it's, it's, it's generational. So we won't break the generational curse right now? Hallelujah. Right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you. So say this. Say, just close your eyes. I want you to relax. Focus on Jesus. Put your hands down. Don't worry about nobody around. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I forgive. I want you to say that name out loud. And what they did to you. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Whatever they did, my father for not being there, this person for molesting me, this person for backstop, whatever it is, you say it out loud. For hurting you, whatever it is. Okay? Now I want you to say this. Say, Jesus, I release forgiveness. Say, Lord, bless them. Lord, bring them to Christ. Let us reconcile in love. If it is your will. Today, I break the power of the enemy through truth and love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for them. I pray that you bless them with peace, 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 Lord, peace. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you fill every area of the temple. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I command any unclean spirit that's been bothering them and their mind and their soul to come up and come out now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now. So I pray that you fill them, Lord, fill them. Fill him. Fill him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fill him. Thank you. Every area of the temple. Good mind. Sound mind. Sound mind. Sound mind. Thank you, Lord. Through all the trials and tribulations, through the suffering, Lord, the pain, you were there, Lord. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus that what the enemy meant for death, you turn it into strength, Lord. Strength. No demonic spirit can dwell in the temple. In the name of Jesus, everything go. Saliasu. Thank you, Lord. Right there. Sare Manti Alabasu. Thank you, Father. Fill it with peace and joy. Peace and joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Peace and joy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right there. Peace. 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 Every unclean spirit, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of her. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. All rejection go. All rejection go. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the strong man, that spirit of rejection, and I command you to come out with lust, with anger, and fear. Fight! Ow! All the way up. Leave her back. Leave her back. Can another woman of God put your hand on her stomach? Put your hand on her stomach. Every demon come out of her stomach right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out! I bind every other thing in the spirit. You gotta go to the abyss. Go to the abyss in the name of Jesus. Come out of her. Come out of her. Keep praying for her. She's gonna love it. Just come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. All of it now. All of it now. All of it. All of it. All of it.
all of it, up and out, 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 up and out,
ok, ¿Así bien? Sí. ¿Cedro? Sí. ¿Cedro? Sí. 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 Where, where are you sitting? Uh, 
a teaching thing. Oh my God. It's a powerful mental I live on your Receive it, being anointed, but not receiving a mental. That was, that, that was crazy. That was a powerful, powerful teaching. That's the reason that we come to you. A mantle and the anointing. Oh my God. They, they forgave. It was like, incredible. Look at Apostle. Apostle. Yo, 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 yo. That's the rich and the real deal, y'all. Praise God for him. Praise God for his ministry. His expression, what he means to the body of Christ. Red Mountain 2023. He's got to come back. Amazing grace. Y'all, let's keep praying with the fire going. There are souls and, 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 and risk. There are people that need to be saved. The fire of God is real. That's the rich character. It's the Bible and the belly. We believe in God for more. Hey, yo. Hey, you heard it from the man. The man suffered cop. Yeah, man, God is good. I want my dog Chris right here. Hey, look, Christopher, look. Y'all see him. I give him about three years. He's going to be walking in the office of the prophet. Yeah, man. To the nations. And I do feel like he's going to do music. I don't know why, but we'll see. Yeah. God, have your way. God bless you, man of God. Thank you for your service. Thank you, officer. God bless you, man of God. Thank you. That was my daughter, you missed her too. She is powerful. Yeah. She has a problem on her bike. Every time I was in the spirit, all I saw was like, she told me, she said, I want to come today because I want to hear him. <laughs> wow. That's why she came to you. Wow. And I said, God, I thank you that you put a word in him to put into her. Because sometimes, because I'm a mother, as an apostle, I'm familiar. Yes. But see, God loved her so much that the person she came to see, she gave the words. So I just want to tell you, thank you so much. Yes, just like, she's like, I want to come see him. She introduced me to your ministry on TikTok. Wow. <laughs> yes. Mr. So God bless you. Thank you so much. <laughs> that you can't in your mind understand, right? You don't work, so it's it's faith. When you speak in English, do you get possessed by something to speak in English? Never. You speak in English with free will. When you, when you go and you, and you walk into your car and somebody can possess you to walk in the car, what gives you the faith to walk in your car? What gives you the faith to drive on the, on the highway? Or what, what, what allows you to drive on the highway without worrying about people killing you? Faith, right? So everything in Christ, all they have to sick to heal is faith. I'm saved by grace and I'm So, the song is the It's faith. Are you speaking to me? You answered my question. I'm able to speak it, but I'm like, is this? That's what I'm here for. It's about faith. And feeling you can't know. Stand your presence is here. But you don't see that. So, the song is faith. Oh my God, you speak in tongues? You can possess that. I'm sorry. You speak in tongues. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i it's like in the Bible. Yeah. Right. And you're going to receive all the glory. You're going to receive all the glory. You're going to be baptized in the Bible. And you're not going to be in the Bible. You came for something. This is what you came for. Yeah. See, y'all want to say this. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say fill with the Holy Ghost. Say baptize me in the Bible. Baptize me in the Bible. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Put your hand in the Bible. I want you guys to not focus on nothing. I'm going to take a really nice little hand in the Bible. I will. Say this. Say Jesus. Jesus. Give me the gift of tongues. Give me the gift of tongues. Now in faith, I want you to open up your mouth and I pray. Mm -hmm. and pray with me, okay? I'm first going to pray in English. Holy Spirit, I pray that you for all of them baptized in the power in Jesus' name. Even for the ones that are already speaking tongues, right? Pray that I see that I want you to give me the
has an anointing for glorious beards. I'll take it, man. Look, fish oil. Fish oil, ashwandanga, and some magnesium. Man, I got some greens, some super greens. You see? You gotta stay healthy, man. You gotta take care of your body, soul, and spirit. We out here, man, it's day four. Day four, man, we got decent sleep. We on the way, as you can see. 
me and Pastor dripped out to go preach this word and went to cast out demons. Look, like I say, casting out demons and some. Hear the sick and some. Jays, boy. Hear the sick and some Jays, Jordans. That's what we do, man. Don't man don't manifest, please. You don't, you don't have to wear church shoes to cast out demons. So yeah, we out, man. Let's get it. Hey, hey someone open the Falcon doors, please. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the camera man got... <laughs> Uh, you brought them, right? The, the dap shirts? Is the merch table up yet? Yes. Uh, the the shirts, I don't know where they oh, put them. Oh, you're going to need some people, right? Everybody yeah. on the Oh, you got some people coming, though, right? Yeah, we're we going to do it right now. What's up, what's up Pastor? No. Oh. Eugene. Oh, look at that. Hey, Ready to receive? <laughs> Absolutely. And what are you expecting tonight? Ooh, um, just life-changing experience, really, for my husband and my friend to really encounter Jesus. Yeah. Amen. What are you guys expecting tonight? Uh, deliverance. Deliverance, healing, baptisms for like everybody. Bless you guys in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the ROC Revival of Humble, Texas. We about to baptize. I don't even know how many people that is, but we about to baptize them. They all just gave their life to Christ. They all just gave their life to Christ. It's revival. It's revival. Revival. We could all be in this building together. Does that mean we're in unity? No. We have to be in one accord. If we all can come in one, in one accord, this place will shake, like in the book of Acts. How many people got saved on the day of Pentecost? 3,000. Right now, there's 2,000 people here. We can shake the place. I looked in the spirit and I seen a heavenly portal open. I seen angels ascending and descending, descending right here. The Lord has allowed that. That means deliverance, healing, all that's gonna break out for his people. In order for that to happen, Jesus Christ needs to be glorified. So y'all ready to worship Yeshua? So I want everybody, close your eyes and put your hands up. Focus on Jesus. You guys know what you're dealing with, right? So if you need deliverance from whatever you're dealing with, you need to confess it, repent it, and then renounce. You just say, I renounce. So first things first, we're going to go through this. Say, Jesus, I confess all sins that I'm aware of and not aware of. And I ask you to forgive me of them. If you're dealing with pornography, that's a big one. If you're dealing with lust, it's a big one. If you're dealing with the love of money or the fear of money, and you're enslaved to mammon, confess it if you got doubt fear confess it if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend living in fornication today it breaks if you get delivered from these demons and you go back to your illegal demonic relationship them demons coming back seven times fold and tell that person to go see god i'm telling you you walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling i can't force you i just reveal the prescription you know i do know how a doctor gives you the prescription jesus gives me i give it to you you got a choice to take the medication or not and this ain't pharmacia this ain't witchcraft this is kingdom, heaven. The Bible says to flee from fornication, repent. Now say, Jesus, deliver me from every wicked spirit. They're not my friends. They are my enemies. And I command them to come out of me. Right now, every demon will go straight to the abyss, to the bottomless pit. Say every spirit of infirmity, leave me right now in jesus name right now in the name of jesus christ i command every unclean spirit to come up and come out in jesus name i bind every unclean spirit and i command you to leave in the name of jesus christ come out 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 I command you, come out, out, come out her, out, out, leave, out, out. Father spirit, depression and suicide. Come out, come out of her, leave. Let's go. I bind the spirit, the strong man. I tie you up, you can't stay. Ow! This isn't a joke. This isn't. This is. This is going water. You guys getting baptized too?
Come on, everybody. Just watch it. Weird. All right. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Baptism represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross. Yes. And he was buried, right? Yes. What happened? He rose. Yes. Do you guys believe that he died on that cross? And then do you believe that he rose on the third day in glory? Yes? You understand that this is a commitment that you're giving on to the Lord. That the old you has passed away and the new you is rising. This is a representation of the death, burial, and resurrection. The same way Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose, you're dying under the water, and you're rising in glory, just like Jesus rose in glory on the third day. Amen? 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 Okay. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Come on, plug your noses. Let's do it. I baptize you guys in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Die with Christ. Rise with Christ. Woo! All right. All right, ready? You're going to need some power. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you die with Christ. Rise with Christ. Hallelujah. The chef, Dean Carlos. That's that's uh, Deacon Deacon is being <laughs> Jezebel Slayer. <laughs> that's Deacon is being. That's Deacon Kevin. Oh yeah, Bobby. What's up? What it do? <laughs> that's a Jezebel killer. Yeah. Slayer. We can't kill demons. <laughs> we can't kill you, man. That's Pat, Pat Mario. What's up, man? What's up, man? God is good. God is good. God is great. God is great. He's awesome. He's awesome. Amen. Awesome. That was not a bad note. I told you, Deacon is Denise. I can sing a little bit. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Alexa. <laughs> Pastor, is this is this official gear? No, 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 no. I'm saying official gear like Navy G Star. Oh, like that's actual brand. Hey man, I thought you was wearing like Navy. You ready? No, bro. Oh, drip. How you wanna pick up? I got y'all. What you wanna do? Huh? Fred gonna be like, I'm hungry later. Right? You can see it. Hey, come in. Hey, Carl. Hey, Dick Carl. Where Pastor Benji at? What you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. Look on the floor. You gotta get the off guard. That boy looks scary. You gotta do the rock star, the rock star, the rock star. You gotta do the rock star. Do, 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 do. Hey, this is the beginning of the rock, Houston. We about to build this thing. We gonna take it. We gonna, we gonna build a nice, nice, big community of Holy Ghost filled soldiers, snipers, Jesus lovers, radical. Bye. That is good, man. We out here. It was a beautiful four or five days. I don't even know how long it was. My brothers pulled up. My sisters pulled up. My wife pulled up. They said, you gotta go. That is good. This flight to Orlando, welcome aboard.